ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. Good evening. I'm calling to order this meeting of the Arlington Select Board on August 19th, 2024. I'm Select Board Chair Steve DeCourcy. Tonight's meeting is being conducted in a high... No, tonight it is in a hybrid... Well, hybrid format okay. consistent with provisions in state law for remote participation in public meetings. Before we begin, please note the following. This meeting is being conducted in the Select Board Chambers and over Zoom. It is being recorded and simultaneously broadcasted on ACMI. People wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. People participating either in person or by Zoom are reminded that you may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, we ask that you provide your full name and place of residence in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. Both Zoom participants and persons watching on Zoom can follow the posted agenda materials found on the town's website, specifically the select board agendas and minutes page. If technical difficulties sever the remote connection to one or more participants and efforts to reconnect within a reasonable period of time fail, the in-person meeting will continue at the discretion of the chair, provided that a quorum of the board is physically present. Zoom participants are encouraged to retain the phone number provided in their confirmation email for a backup audio connection to the meeting. There will be an opportunity for public comment tonight during open forum. If you are attending by Zoom and want to participate, please raise your hand when I announce that public comment is open. We have 20 items on our agenda tonight. Let's see how much of the town's business we can get done. So with that, we will move right to item two, presentation on the master plan by Claire Ricker, the Director of Planning and Community Development. Good evening, Ms. Ricker. Good evening, thank you. Great. All right, great, thank you. Um, good evening, my name is Claire Ricker and I'm your Director of Planning and Community Development here for the Town of Arlington. Thank you for having me. Uh, tonight's presentation will be a summary of the information session we held last uh, February in anticipation of the Master Plan Project launch. Um, tonight I'm here to update you on the work in progress uh, to update the plan, um, the Master Plan of 2015, uh, 2015, Your Town, Your Future, and we'll look forward to the next 10 years to establish goals and objectives that will bring us through to the year 2035-2036. Uh, we're calling this process of the Arlington Master Plan Update AMP Up, which is fitting, uh, as we envision that this process will result in an updated master plan that reflects the energy and enthusiasm for Arlington that's so evident in the community. Um, so quickly tonight, we'll um, go over uh, briefly what is master planning. We'll look back at the master plan of 2015. We'll look at the planning uh, process, uh, including roles and responsibilities, uh, the project status and the timeline, and we'll go over next steps. Um, thank you. So uh, what is a master plan? A master plan is a general plan. Sometimes it's a land use plan, but it's a document designed to guide the future of a community. It is an expression of municipalities' goals and recommended action to achieve those goals. It's an outline for orderly growth, providing continued guidance for decision making. It's a document focusing on immediate and long range protection, enhancement, growth, and development. And it's a document we can turn to when verifying priorities for immediate and long term growth, preservation, and conservation. Characteristics of a master plan are that it's comprehensive, it's long-term, it's general, and that it's focused primarily on physical development. A master plan serves a number of functions. It provides continuity to the community over time. It balances competing interests. It protects uh, public and private investment in infrastructure. It plans for development in a way that protects valued resources. And it allows people to express a collective vision uh, for their community. 
The brief, uh, brief process uh, for creating a master plan includes uh, oversight. Uh, a committee is created or already exists to oversee the creation of the plan. Uh, qualitative and quantitative data is collected um, on the existing conditions of the town. A series of forums, meetings, and surveys designed to engage the public and get citizen feedback, at which point the feedback is incorporated into a plan draft. Data is analyzed. Goals and recommendations are made based on what the data shows. For example, and this is an example, if the data shows that the housing stock is not keeping up with demand, then a master plan will likely have a section about how to increase the number of housing units available after the goals and recommendations are created with community input. The role of the community in a master plan, join master plan committees and working groups, attend public meetings, design charrettes, office hours either in person or virtually, complete surveys and other data uh, collection uh, devices, and of course continue the conversation um, with your friends and neighbors. Um, because planning should be proactive, not reactive. Um, we know there are certainly uh, several examples of controversial development um, here in town that people have uh, wanted to express uh, you know, uh, their, their opinion uh, about um, that, uh, you know, perhaps in a negative way, that's considered reactive planning. A development that's based on go shared goals and objectives, that's proactive planning. Uh, we can agree on the goals, uh, but we might and often do disagree on the actions uh, necessary to achieve the goals. So what is a master plan in Massachusetts? A master plan in uh, Massachusetts is uh, governed by mass general law. There are nine required elements, uh, including a goals and policies statement and an implementation plan. The seven study areas included in a master plan in Massachusetts are land use, um, determining where our opportunities are for new growth, where our opportunities may be for preservation and conservation, housing, a plan that meets the community's housing needs, economic development, um, providing data-driven strategies for promoting and enhancing business opportunities in the town, arts and culture, a plan for protection and enhancement of historic and natural resources, including uh, potentially a plan for public art, uh, open space, a plan for enhancing and maintaining the town's open space and recreation facilities, public assets, a plan for expansion and improvement of public infrastructure facilities and assets, and then, of course, transportation, which is a plan for movement of both people and goods in the town. So it's seven study areas plus a statement on goals and policies and an implementation plan. And the statement on goals and policies is derived from public outreach and data collection. Um, these goals and policies uh, should be incorporated into other uh, policies and ordinances in the community, for example, the zoning ordinance or maybe the capital improvement plan. Master planning at a glance. Um, Jim, you can go through these until we get to. Thanks. That looks a lot cooler when I'm doing it. Um, <laughs> Master planning at a, a glance, uh, identify issues uh, uh, in the community, existing conditions, survey the public, and survey the public over and over and over again. List goals based on that public outreach and communication. Go back to the public again and make sure that we got the goals right. Prepare the plan, a plan draft. Consider alternatives. There will be, I'm sure, plenty of alternatives and plenty of input following presentation of a plan draft. Then we adopt the plan, implement the plan, and then finally we evaluate the plan. Which brings us to the 2015 master plan, your town, your future. So how do we know when it's time to update the plan? Well, first we see how old our existing plan is. No one size fits all, um, but our last master plan did say 10 years. Have the goals and objectives from our previous plan been met? If not, why? Has there been rapid growth or decline? Is the community younger, aging? What are our population demographics? Is new infrastructure needed? Um, what are some economic changes that may impact um, overall uh, planning and development in the town? Um, and has uh, development been inconsistent um, or uh, spotty um, and maybe not in line with um, the goals and visions um, of the town? Um, this next graphic was developed as part of the community outreach process to establish goals and visions for the 2015 plan. And then this was the 2015 master plan process over two years, um, including information gathering um, up to uh, master plan proposals, recommendations, plan adoption, which they estimated in April 2015. I believe they met that schedule and then an update in 2025. And we are here 10 years later. All right. Um, 
So some goals and policies from the 2015 master plan, one from land use, which is goal number two, to encourage development that enhances the quality of Arlington's natural resources in the built environment. The recommended actions to achieve that goal were the recodification of the zoning bylaw, which was completed in 2019, and adoption of design guidelines for commercial industrial sites, which is underway in 2024. Um, some more goals and policies, this time from the transportation section, goal number two, enhance mobility and increase safety by maximizing transit, bicycle, and pedestrian access, and other alternative modes of transportation. The recommended actions to achieve that goal, adopt a complete streets policy, which was done in 2016, connect Arlington Sustainable Transportation Plan, which was published in 2021. There are several other supporting documents um, that uh, came out of the 2015 uh, master plan, including the Arlington Heights Neighborhood Action Plan, the Economic Analysis of Industrial Districts, Residential Design Guidelines, the Net Zero Action Plan, the Update to the Open Space and Recreation Plan, and the list you know, goes on. So next steps. Um, the ARB has appointed a new master plan update advisory committee, the AMP Up Advisory Committee. Um, the draft request for proposals for planning consultants has been drafted by staff and by the AMP Up uh, Committee that was advertised, I believe, last week. Uh, town staff and AMP Up Advisory Committee will review proposals and interview consultants. That's due to occur the first week of October. The planning consultants selected and project kickoff before the end of the year. So this is a timeline for the 2024 master plan update. Um, you can see we're uh, third item in, issue RFP uh, for consultant with the goal of bringing um, a master plan update to a uh, town meeting um, in 2026. All right. So the 2024 AMP Up Advisory Committee, um, this says up to 12 community members. We expanded it to 13 plus two representatives from the Redevelopment Board and one from the Select Board. It's a two-year commitment, meets monthly over Zoom through 2024. We may meet or we likely meet more frequently through 2025, and we are seeking a Select Board volunteer for the committee. Um, I would have made this presentation earlier this summer. Um, this was, I think, the, the soonest I could get in and, and ask for a volunteer. So thank you very much uh, for your attention this evening, and um, I'm happy to answer any questions. Great. Uh, th thank you, Ms. Rickard. Before I open it up to board members for, for questions or comments, um, I just wanted to summarize a couple things beyond what was um, said. And I have, I have a copy of the 2015 master plan here, and it's been a, a really worthwhile document. And, and following the creation of the master plan, a master plan implementation committee was created that was just dissolved earlier this year. But that, their work is still on the town's website. I think their last report to town meeting was in 2022. But for those of you interested in looking at what had happened during the master plan period, they kept the grid of all of the goals, what's happening, if something um, was done, it was marked off, the areas of responsibility. And it's a, a real good comprehensive document for that. And as Ms. Ricker said, the um, chapter 41, uh, section 81D deals with master plans. It's the redevelopment board as planning board for the town that is responsible for creation of the master plan and, and for any updates. And so a, a majority vote of the redevelopment board is all that's necessary to update the plan. Past practice has been back in 2015 to seek endorsement from the select board, board selectmen at that time, and, and from town meeting. And I imagine that's gonna be the same time period. Um, so just again, before I open it up to, to board members, I, the last master plan committee advisory committee, I believe select board members may have been liaisons from the board mm. to the to the um, actual committee. Uh, Mr. Curro, Joe Curro and Steve Byrne were the two liaisons. I think Joe continued on um, after Steve left the board. Um, so again, something to talk about. I appreciate being asked for members, but I'd, I'd like to hear if there's any member interest, first of all, but whether a discussion is, do, are we, is it more appropriate for us to be a liaison as opposed to a member where you already have 15 members on the board and it's going to be the product of the redevelopment board. So with that, uh, I went on a little longer than I thought I would. I'll uh, open it up to board members for any questions, comments. 
Uh, Eric, uh, I'm going to try to go last in case someone covers my Okay. All right, Eric's volunteering. All right, Mr. Helm. <laughs> no, I'm going first so that uh, <laughs> give everybody else the opportunity. Um, thank you, Ms. Ricker, for an excellent presentation. That was uh, very tight but also very um, substantial. And that's not easy to do. Um, I had a question, and this is something I thought about for a while in my years of living with Master Plan and all the various other plans that we produce. And that is, uh, how do you see the relationship of, say, you know, I think you mentioned you know, the master plan identifies a love is responsive to data. If, if we need a need for housing, it's going to go in there. You know, we also have to do a housing production plan for other purposes. You know, we have the, we have the uh, other plans of, that, that grew out of this. We've done other land use planning. So, you know, how do you see the master plan coexisting and working with these other planning documents that we produce? I, that's an excellent question, thank you. I think, um, you know, we are doing a master plan update. We're not going to do a master plan whole cloth um, like the 2015 master plan. Um, I see those other planning documents that came out, you know, that were, were part of that 2015 plan or, or you know, were developed, um, you know, uh, for, for other reasons, um, you know, perhaps identified in the plan, perhaps not, um, as uh, contributing. Um, certainly to the update and I think you know as we look back I mean the sustainable transportation plan at this point is four years old um, and you know it, it, it's it's it, it, I hate to say plans beget other plans but they kind of do um, and so these documents that have come out of the original master plan um, are due to be updated in a way I think that, that falls under master planning um, itself. It's time for us to go back and look at goals, visions, etc., cetera, um, from the community in light of these seven um, uh, study areas. Um, so I do see you know, definitely contributing certainly a point of data uh, for us to reflect on and include um, as we're moving forward in the planning process. But, you know, um, you know, at, at this point, I hate to say they're out of date, um, but they're certainly something that we're working towards uh, completing as we go. No, it's helpful. Thank you. Um, it was, even just in this brief presentation and in reviewing the slides before the meeting, it was really gratifying to see that we are holding ourselves to measuring the progress that we're making and the deliverables. And the town has done that for a number of years. I think it's a credit to leadership from everywhere from the town manager's office to the planning department, to other town staff, to the board itself, certainly to the redevelopment board primarily. Um, and so I'm really excited about kicking this, uh, this project off because I think with the town's track record, of setting itself goals that it can measure mm -hmm. and setting itself goals that it is willing to track. Uh, we're, we're, it's really, really useful. Um, I was curious, I, I actually did not know that this was prescribed in, uh, in Mass General Law. And um, chap so Chapter 41, Section 81D even says that the, bo that the Redevelopment Board may, uh, may update it, but, but from time to time may extend or perfect such plan. So, you know, aim high, right? Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> I, sometimes the language of, of legislatures is, is really amusing, but I think an update is probably sufficient. Yeah. Um, and finally, I really like the, uh, the branding of the name and the logo. <laughs> For this. Yeah. I think that will be really important, though, for community engagement, for getting that in people's mind, um, so that when they are approached and they are proactively surveyed, they can mm. say, oh, yeah, I've heard about this proof. I want to be part of it. So kudos for that as well. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, as to the chair's uh, question, I think, for the board, uh, I, I don't feel strongly about it either way. I, think, I do think a liaison would be sufficient. Um, I, I really appreciate being asked to participate, however form that takes. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Uh, I thought you said you wanted to go last. Oh, yeah. No, I didn't know if anyone <laughs> Mr. Her I didn't know sure, sure, Mr. Diggins? Yeah. Well, I was actually going to recommend Mr. Hurd because I'd like to see younger people being um, involved uh, in this. Be, uh, I think be, since um, it's about the future, be, uh, I think be, uh, people under 50, be, uh, this will affect them more be, uh, than those of us be, um, over 50. I think it's important to get as much input from younger people as possible because, once again, I mean, it's going to affect them more. And also, I mean, it's harder to get younger people, but I think it's worth it. You know, and, and, and I mean, they sometimes, I mean, sometimes I think we underestimate I mean, their understanding you know, of of the situation, you know, um, and, and to the extent that they may lack understanding, they can get it very quickly. So, so that was one reason why I was going to um, recommend you, especially since it's a liaison position now. So, and 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 I know it's, I know time well, we're is still a talk premium. About yeah. That. So, uh, so that that's my, my argument for that. I mean, my question though is, I mean, what? How does leadership factor into this? The reason I ask that is that you know, um, I read the legislation too, and and. And the nature of the input 
will lend itself more to the status quo. I mean, uh, uh, I mean, when you go around asking people what they want, they generally don't want bold change. Mm -hmm. They don't want transformational change. I mean, uh, I mean they're very, I mean, it's like, I mean, incremental small changes, yeah, you know, uh, 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 but they're generally not gonna go for something big. I mean, it takes real leadership, I mean, to get something big. I mean, and so how does that factor into this process? I think that's an interesting question. I think, um, you know, this is a document that is more visionary, I think, and, and aspirational, as you mentioned, than it, than it is, um, you know, a, a sort of a, a, a checklist of, of things to do. Um, I don't anticipate, you know, uh, as part of this process that any specific project one way or the other would be identified as, you know, something that, that we would, you know, short of saying, you know, let's just look at this in general. Let's just, let's look at our Arlington Center, say, for example, generally. Um, I, I think that it, 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 it's, a, it's a document that I think, you know, uh, really strikes a balance between, you know, you know actual physical development and, and, and visionary statement. Um, and so I think that's really what we're aiming for at this point is, you know, what, you know, as part of the uh, MBTA communities process, I think, you know, trying to identify um, what some of the goals are for the community, try to tease those out. Um, that is really our challenge here, and I think you know it, it, it will take um, it will take leadership, you know certainly to get us there. Um, but I do think that um, you know we we need to be really clear about what this document is and what this document isn't. It isn't necessarily a development plan, per se. It really is you know a visionary um, document. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Uh, I think, Mr. Hurd, I don't know if you want to, oh, if you have a rebuttal for that. I felt like retaliation from my wisecrack in the last <laughs> meeting. I mean, I'm, as long as the group meets at 11 p.m., I'm happy to participate. <laughs> no, just, I mean, if it's a liaison position and we create two liaisons, yeah. I think then that would be yeah. fine because we can participate in a, in a meeting with two people and not have a quorum of the board. So yeah. I'm happy to serve in that role. I, I, just a question from Mr. When is the next meeting of the advisory committee? It's the first Thursday of the month. Okay. I think that's September 5th. Okay. So I, I know there was a similar situation at the redevelopment board where I don't think you had all five members and there was two members who expressed interest and then there was an official vote afterwards because we don't meet until September 9th. Mm. So as we ask the questions, and, and we haven't heard yet from Mrs. Mahan, but we can talk about timing. We don't necessarily have to decide what we're going to do this evening, but um, I did thank you for, for further information on the meeting date. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Thank you. Um, and thank you for the presentation. And also, um, I spoke to the chair about this after the fact, but as you know, I went in as an individual uh, the night that you were uh, announcing in the redevelopment board the makeup of the committee members. Um, and I had put three scenario suggestions and I said, I'm a big girl if you choose not to do any of them, which you did, um, that's fine. And, and the reason I say that is I've seen this with the previous master plan, which went down a road and started to get sort of had to deal with more of the negative than the actual purpose. Then there was a reset and it, worked out and saw the same thing with MBTA communities. And, um, and I'm, I say this with all sincerity and not, you know, uh, denigrating or speaking poorly of, of any individual. That's my very real concern right now. And I, I sort of see it starting off that way. Mm -hmm. Which, as Mr. Diggins pointed out, you know, change is difficult. Um, I'd like to see, of the seven, maybe three really big changes um, from uh, this committee. Um, if we could get seven really big changes, that would be great too. But I'm just trying to, I always think the worst and, and put it low. So, um, so, so I am concerned in terms of that. So what, what I would say to my colleagues is, um, and I also think um, if you're a member of this committee, especially when it gets really moving and um, I have had conversations with Ms. Ricker and um, with Mr. Benson as an individual, um, but it's, I think it's not going to just be the monthly meetings. I think when the subcommittees get formed, 
that's going to be a commitment, which is, and I'm not saying anything negative, I'm saying in terms of this board individually. If I had my druthers, and if I had my way, because I did have a lot to say at the redevelopment board, because uh, I, I, like everyone, want, want this to get off on the right foot. If we have two liaisons, that would be great, but I, I would still like to take it, advantage of the opportunity that it appears um, we're being asked for a full member appointment, because I certainly have someone in mind. One of the things I'm very concerned about, um, as I've discussed with you all, and the answer was back, well, you can tell that person or those people join subcommittees. Um, I want to, I would like to see it a little bit more diverse. Um, so if the select board had two liaisons, but also if we utilize the fact that we can appoint somebody and maybe put names forth, I certainly have a name. Um, just because I have the captive, captured audience, I'm going to take advantage of this. When I said three of the seven, I'd like to see really big changes. And it's just me. I'd like to see seven, all seven areas, big changes. But that's not. And just sort of getting the gauge and the pulse of people out there. Um, the housing, economic development, transportation. Those are the three that really, you know, we have to focus on all seven. But those are the three I'd really like to see us make inroads. Those are the three as... Um, Mr. Helmuth um, pointed out, I'd like to sort of piggyback on, on his comments that I think it's going to take a lot of um, balancing in terms of, uh, I'll take transportation. I want to make sure that the, uh, we had a, a goals session um, for the board and with the town manager, and especially around transportation issues that, that have come before this board mm -hmm. that I know uh, my colleagues on the redevelopment board and Ms. Ricker are also aware of, um, but we have had discussions and the manager has sort of outlined his um, criteria, um, whether addressing it, and if I say anything incorrect, I want you to raise your hand at the end and correct me, but um, coming up with some solutions, you know, perhaps vis-a-vis -vis the capital planning, perhaps some um, other vehicles. He didn't say this, but I don't know if opera, um, if any of that is left over. And I want to make sure, as Mr. Helmuth pointed out, and I think you've already answered this and you're cognizant of it, that um, on that particular issue there is coordination. Mm -hmm. So that I, I would hate to see something come out that just in the – road of goodwill and not, you know, unintended consequences goes completely against um, the conversation and the discussion and the goals that we outlined with the manager. Sure. And, I, and I know he's also taken into account, um, and I don't know, I can't remember because unfortunately for him, I've had so many conversations with him on various issues, including transportation and the issues that come before. So I, I can't remember if he said possibly a consultant coming in, mm. looking at, you know, what options under federal standards and, and state standards that this board might want to consider in the future. So I just want to make sure that that's all blended in together. And then on economic development, which Mr. Diggins has certainly been no stranger to that, um, that's where I would segue into if we do the two liaison, but if we could still take advantage of the opportunity of perhaps appointing someone. Um, one of the things I would just put forward is we're somebody's always going to have issue that we didn't do enough. It, it j mm -hmm. just, it's true. You know, you, you can't do everything. You can't be perfect. But in terms of, and I know we have Ms. Marzilli, who's done a fantastic job on, on so many other um, issues and um, uh, on diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I know we have that, but I want to make sure, which you all are doing, that we put our best foot forward. And that's public and businesses. And um, I really would like to see on the committee, and if we avail ourselves of the opportunity, that there's an Arlington resident who is also a business owner who's in an actual storefront. I know you have two individuals, but it's, it's easier when, and, and, and the reason I say that is what that brings is, I think that individual or individuals or whatever, um, is in that genre and knows fellow business owners in storefronts, knows the plight of doing day-to-day -day business here in Arlington. I'm a business owner and I work out of my home and that's where my office is. I wouldn't be a good, in my opinion, person to be on this committee because I really know nothing about storefronts, 
is it a landlord issue? Is it a site issue? Is it their environment? So, so I would just say to my colleagues, if nobody, um, because it is a big time commitment, because there's more than actual what's put before us, the sub. I think I heard there's going to be up to 12 subcommittees. Oh, I, I think we'll probably do a subcommittee for each of the seven. Okay, um, so seven study areas. I yes. apologize. Somebody, somebody from the. So seven, so there would have to be that. I would like to, and especially since, you know, if we have the opportunity, I'd like to appoint someone. We've done that before. Believe it or not, when I first came on the scene, every committee that the then Board of Selectmen had, infrastructure, bylaw, recodification, you name it, I was their appointee. <laughs> so we, it doesn't necessarily have to be one of us. And then just last, whatever outreach, which I know you're, you're going to do, um, through the business community, I hope it's a person, um, if it's somebody who's added to it, or if what was said to me, tell that person go to a subcommittee meeting. Whatever. Okay, that, that can happen too. But also, um, whatever we can do outreach to the public, you know, especially around, we have so many identified neighborhood groups mm. with kiosks and the bike path. You know, try to get the information out that way, because so many people are getting their information about town events on the different kiosks, whether it's up at Robbins Farm. The brand new one that was the Eagle Scout um, project up at Great Meadows, that just was put in, I think, August 14th, which is fantastic. You know, so definitely, I know you want to do this. I'm not saying you don't. Find a new way to outreach to the business community, as well as continue with um, the um, business community. And Mr. Feeney, did I misspeak on anything that I attributed to you? Smaha, no, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Thank so if my colleagues could think about, if none of us, I like the one or two liaison people, but I'd still like to take advantage of the opportunity of appointing someone as our designee that isn't one of us, if one of us does not want to do that, which I don't in terms of the appointment. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. So I, I, I think for purposes of tonight's discussion, I mean, I, I put it out there in terms of what role individual board members would like to have, and I think it's something maybe we come back and, and if someone wants to express interest this evening, that's fine. I think you know, one of the things here is the committee, again, at the end of the day, it's the redevelopment board's um, document and, and, and what they're approving. And so what we're, um, originally the presentation was have a select board member. Now, Mrs. Mahan raises the, having a select board designee and if no member of the board is interested in being a full member, I, I, I guess we'd make the request back. We'd like to make a designee. How does, and, and I think there's been some discussions, but it's, it's not technically our call to have the designee. So we ask you, if we don't have a member, um, there may be an interest on the board to have a select board designee to the, um, to the committee. And, and I'm getting ahead of myself, but before I do that, maybe just ask you for a reaction to that as a potential option. Yeah, it's an, it's an interesting idea. I think, um, I, you know, really what I'm looking to do is make sure that this body is informed uh, the entire time that we're working in the process. Um, and whether that's through a, a designee or a member, um, I think, you know, either probably works. I'm not sure if I need to, uh, you know, uh, run it by the redevelopment board or anything like that. I, I don't, I, you know, since we voted and it did say a select board member, but I think I, I can't imagine that the, that the language in that is so strict that it wouldn't also support an appointee. Okay, so, so what I'm thinking, and again, unless there's any member of the board that would like to be a full member, the advisory committee, I'm not really seeing that from anybody. <laughs> um, I'd almost recommend that I put this on our agenda for the September 9th okay. meeting. Um, maybe we have a discussion between now and then, and and then if one or two individuals, and you can mention tonight, or you can get back to me in the meantime, are interested, at least as serving as liaisons, would recommend that you attend the meeting, which I believe would be September 5th. That's the first Thursday in yes. September. Um, so any other questions or comments, Mr. Dickens? Well, I, mean, I guess just process-wise, be. I guess maybe we should ask if they're also interested in having the uh, designee and liaisons, because I thought it was going to be initially liaisons or designee. Uh, uh, so, so I leave it to you, Mr. Chair, as to whether you want to ask the director that question. But if you're fine with both, mean. 
I feel I, I, well, his, his, if we went to his on route, here's what I say. If it's a member who would go to meetings, may not go to every meeting, yeah. would report back, whereas a designee would be a voting member and, and would be attending every meeting. Yeah. So if we did that, I mean, the liaison is almost someone just attending, but, but that, that's a fair point, Mr. Yeah. Diggins, if, if, if we did go that route. And again, it, it, liaison is understood. A liaison would not be a voting member of the committee. Sure. Sure. Okay. I think, um, yeah, I, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm open to whatever this board thinks is the you know, best vehicle for getting the information that you need. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, all right. So with that, I think we can leave it open until September 9th. Individual members can contact me about the, the, the um, liaison. I don't see anybody raising their hand to be a full member. So I am going to put on our next agenda subject to further discussion. Uh, with Ms. Ricker after she talks with the uh, perhaps members of the redevelopment board for a potential designee by the, or sel uh, the select board. Sure. Um, okay. Great. Great. All right. Well, thank you. Oh, actually, I didn't ask. <laughs> Got caught up here. I do have a couple of comments and, and just, um, just going back to the original plan and, and, and Mr. Helmuth had, had um, you know, recognized everything that's in here. Mrs. Mahan had talked about it too. And I'd mentioned just analyzing everything, but it's really a fascinating document from 2015, just in terms of what was current at that time. There was, there was a goal to implement the CPA. Well, the CPA is so, um, you know, every year that committee is doing such a, such a great job. And, and speaking about topical, I, I see Ms. Anderson and Mr. Benson, um, that we'll be hearing from them shortly. One of the goals in 2015 was to work with Cambridge, Somerville, and the MWRA to eliminate all CSO discharges within the next 20 years. That's 2035. That, I imagine, will still be on the table for the next master plan. Um, there was overnight parking policies changing them. We, we've had a pilot since then. There's, there's just a lot that has gone on. There's some things we haven't gotten to. And, and, um, but it, it really does test you as a community in terms of, okay, here are your goals. What are you going to do to achieve them? And if you can't, why not? And I think, I think that grid that the implementation committee had prepared past few years speaks to that a little bit too. I'm going to revisit that as soon as I can. Thank yeah. You. yeah, okay. Great. All right. Well, thank you um, for, thank for coming you. this evening. Right. Okay. Uh, next, item three is a discussion of the MBTA proposed development of ALY station slash CSO issues. Um, Eugene Benson and Kristen Anderson. And I, I also want to add that I, I did have a discussion before the meeting with Mrs. Mahan, who was also interested in having this item on the agenda this evening. So with that, I'll turn it over to the two of you. Yeah. Um, my name is Kristen Anderson. Um, I live at 12 Oak on the Road West, but I used to live uh, right next to the Alewife Brook. I had uh, flood water in my home um, a couple times in the three years that I lived there. And um, so I am uh, very concerned about um, the CSOs and the sewage flooding, which has not stopped. And I'm Eugene Benson. I live at 16 Hillsdale Road. And thank you for putting the MBTA's proposed redevelopment of the Alewife Station area on the agenda for this evening's select board meeting. The redevelopment will have a profound impact on Arlington. We think now is the time for the town to engage with the MBTA about the proposal. I'm going to give a very brief overview of the proposal, just some of the highlights. Then Kristen will discuss uh, how the CSOs regularly pollute Elwife Brook and contribute to the brook flooding and their relation to the area that may be developed. Then I'll discuss next steps options for you to consider. It's important to emphasize at this point that we don't take a position on whether the MBTA's proposal is good or bad because it's not fleshed out at all. We really don't know what it is. There's a lot more to learn. Redevelopment at the Elwife station could be good or it could be bad, depending on how it's developed and whether it deals with the Elwife CSO's pollution and flooding and with traffic impacts in the area. So a brief overview of the proposal. MBTA has started a procurement process to get a private sector joint development partner for the redevelopment of not only the garage, but all the property that they own there. 
So it's the Red Line Station, 2,733 space parking garage, commuter rail right of way, and ancillary layover and maintenance facility land. Um, the T believes that the property offers a tremendous redevelopment opportunity and they want a piece of that opportunity. It envisions that the existing parking garage will be demolished and a mixed use development that includes a new parking garage taking its place. It also envisions other parts of the area being developed for residential and commercial uses with a possible station for the Fitchburg commuter rail also. Uh, the MBJ's plan is to enter into a pre-development agreement with its chosen development partner and create a master plan. And once the preconditions are met, it's to proceed directly with a long-term lease for the developer. So they're on a pretty fast track for this. Um, the T has written in its documents that it expects the development of the L Life complex to be closely coordinated with the city of Cambridge, as you might imagine. But there's no mention of the town of Arlington. We boarded the property in any of the T information. They anticipate that they'll have a multidisciplinary plant personnel put together and they will look at the plan submitted by the developer. They say it's possible that they'll form a small group of external stakeholders to add transparency to and ensure support of the process, but there's no discussion of the composition of the internal external stakeholder group or how it will be chosen. Um, potential impacts on Arlington are tremendous. Potential for very increased flows to the CSOs because you're talking about a great development, lots of residents, commercial, in an area with combined sewers. Increased flows means increased pollution of Alewife Brook and more flooding of the brook over into Arlington, into the DC land, and in really big storms, potentially back into people's backyards and homes. Um, if they don't do this right, there will be missed opportunities, and we'll get into that, to actually eliminate or reduce significantly the CSOs. For example, uh, once they tear down the garage, it's a great place to put storage, sewage storage, under the garage. And while most of what the MWA has done and the communities have done is for sewer separation, they have done some sewage storage, which in many cases is much less expensive. And in fact, Milwaukee has pretty much solved its CSO problem with storage rather than sewage separation. So tearing down the garage makes a great opportunity for that. There's going to be a traffic increase. What will they do about that? How will it affect Arlingtonians going through that area? There will probably be nice work and shopping opportunities. Maybe some people who live in Arlington will end up working nearby. And there's the possibility of commuter rail station with two stops into North Station. So it has both pros and cons, but if they don't do it the right way, I think Arlington will suffer now. Kristen's going to talk about the CSO. Yes, yeah. and I, uh, I may have forgotten to mention that we're from Save the Alewife Brook. Um, and David Stock is here tonight, too. He is also from Save the Alewife Brook. Um, so last year, um, actually, let's start with yesterday. Yesterday, we had some rain, and sewage was dumped into the brook um, at the MBTA station uh, parking garage CSO. It's just a few feet away from that circular structure. Um, and last year, 27 million gallons of untreated sewage was dumped into Ilwife Brook, 27 million gallons. In 2021, 51 million gallons of untreated sewage was dumped into the brook. This is a densely populated area with 5,000 people living in the Ilwife's 100-year floodplain. There are multiple environmental justice neighborhoods along the brook. Last year, the brook flooded over its bank um, at least five times, sending untreated sewage flood water into the DCR um, State Park and into the Elwife Greenway. We saw children riding bikes through untreated sewage flood water. We saw joggers running through it. 
and we saw parents pushing baby strollers um, through untreated sewage flood water. The situation is so bad, it is absolutely horrifying. People shouldn't have to be exposed to sewage when they are trying to get to the T. They shouldn't have untreated sewage in their parks, yards, and homes. Climate change, with its wetter and more furious storms, threatens to exacerbate the problem, making it two to four times as bad in the alewife as it is now in just a couple decades, unless we see improvements. Um, several months ago, Save the Alewife Brook, along with the Mystic River Watershed Association, called for an end to new sewer hookups to the alewife CSOs until the problem is solved. Since then, the Commonwealth is considering citing a new development just feet away from Cambridge's worst CSO, uh, which is known as CAM 401A. Last year, this one CSO discharged over 20 million gallons of untreated sewage pollution. The 2023 discharge from this one CSO, CAM 401A, significantly exceeded the permitted annual total for all of the Elwife Brook CSOs, uh, which is 7.3 million gallons annually. Note that this CSO is just feet away from uh, the MBTA's uh, circular parking garage. Um, Save the Elwife Brook shot footage of that area under sewage flood water late last year. The next closest CSO to the MBTA parking garage is only a few hundred feet away. It is known as MWR-003. That CSO belongs to the Massachusetts Water Resources Authority. MWRA dumped over a million gallons of untreated sewage from that CSO last year. And it's important to understand that MWRA reconstructed this CSO in 2015, making it larger so that it now discharges greater volumes of untreated sewage than it had before. This CSO functions as cheap hydraulic relief for the Commonwealth's downstream sewer system. The regional sewer system, system has systemic problems and is unable to provide adequate capacity during storm events. Um, and when you start looking at um, these development plans in as rough um, a, a stage as it is now, as early a stage as it is now, the first thing that you may notice is that the Alewife Brook branch sewer runs right through that MBTA property. They will not be able to ignore the sewer system. The Alewife sewer system will be part of the MBTA's construction plan. So where will sewage from new buildings um, at Alewife Station end up? It will end up in the yards, parks, and homes of Arlington residents unless there is an end to new sewer hookups pending a solution. This is not an insurmountable problem. It takes money. And we are at a critical point right now where there exists a possibility for an investment. Cambridge, Somerville, and MWRA are in the planning stages of a new plan to address the Alewife CSOs. But they need to deliver a comprehensive plan that calls for a virtual um, end to CSOs or a treatment facility for the Alewife. We have not yet seen a plan that includes complete or virtual elimination of untreated sewage pollution. Um, and you may recall that we've already been at this going to meetings with Somerville, Cambridge, and MWRA for a couple of years now. We have not seen a plan that calls for an end to this problem. So um, as an immediate measure, we are asking to limit increases of sewage flows by prohibiting new hookups to the CSOs. It is because of the deleterious impacts of untreated sewage flooding in the neighborhoods of multiple environmental justice populations along the brook that we must prevent further increases in sewage flows until a real solution is in planning. Um, and um, thank you so much for having us here tonight. We really appreciate it. Um, and we ask that you please support an end to untreated sewage pollution in East Arlington. So now I want to talk a little bit about what we think the select board might do. Okay. Yeah, if this. I could ask you, I, I don't know how long, the, it, it, how, how much longer you have here, but uh, sure. I'll, that'd be great. I, Thank I, you. I, yeah, I will wrap it up by saying it's clear that the town is a stakeholder in the development, but it's not clear to the T that the town is a stakeholder in development. If Elwife were any closer to Arlington, it would be in Arlington. The Elwife Brook flooding and pollution is in Arlington. Arlington residents use, according to a 2007 study, 
the Alewife Garage more than any other community's residents except for Lexington. The com potential commuter rail station, traffic impacts, um, and as I said, it could be good or bad for the town depending on how it's developed. And if they develop it, ignoring the CSOs, it's going to be bad. And we just had a chance today to look at the documents that they showed in their initial uh, presentation to potential developers. CSOs were not mentioned once at all. Sewage was not mentioned once at all. So what can the select board do? Here are our suggestions. A letter to the chair of the MBTA board of directors and the MBTA general manager expressing the concerns that we've talked about, about the CSOs, the flooding, traffic, and that there are opportunities for fixing those as part of the project. Ask for a stakeholder group now. That includes Arlington. Ask for a meeting. A letter to the governor, the secretary of transportation, uh, State Senator Friedman and State Representatives Rogers and Garbally along the same lines. What the governor should do, and I think this would need to go in a letter, is asking her to convene the state agencies and authorities necessary to work on this together. Because we don't see that happening. That's the T, the MWRA, DCR, which owns the parkland, um, DEP, which is going to have to permit some of this and to make sure that Arlington is part of what's going on also. Because without that coordination, to use a terrible metaphor, the T's just gonna run this train down the track, right? Without concern with anything other than the Federal Transportation Authority, which they said they need to talk to because they funded part of Wife. And the last, th our suggestion is appoint a small town committee that includes one person, or a liaison, I should add, from the select board. Um, someone from Save the Elwife Brook, someone from the Track of Advisory Committee, someone from uh, planning and perhaps the town manager or his designee to work on this for the town to interact with all those people. Our fear is if you just make an occasional touch, nothing will happen. You know, we will have to be proactive throughout this entire process to try to get a good outcome. So thank you for your attention, and we are interested in what you might want to do. Okay. Thank, thank, thank you for the presentation and for your continued work. And be, one thing I will mention, Ms. Anderson mentioned the, the outfall, the overflow that occurred at Camp 401A, and, and this is the first time I think we've actually been within the period. We're within the 48-hour period that the outfall, out, overflow occurred. It occurred and people remember yesterday morning it rained, so between 7.52 a.m. and 8.18, there was an overflow, and the estimate is about 890,000 gallons of sewage entered mm -hmm. into, the, um, into the brook. I think that's the, the, the right number. And, and um, Cambridge and Somerville are obligated to issue alerts when that happens, so that will run until tomorrow morning, that 48-hour that period. And as part of that warning, there's a required public health warning. And I'm, I'm just going to read from it because, again, it just shows you. First of all, it identifies potentially affected areas as Arlington, Cambridge, Somerville, and Medford. The required public health warning is avoid contact with these water bodies, which includes Hillwife Brook, for 48 hours after the discharge or overflow ceases due to increased health risks from bacteria and other pollutants. And then you refer to a website. So that's... It wasn't a real big rain event yesterday morning, but you can see that that, that triggered the overflow. So um, with that, I will turn to board members for any questions or comments. Um, Mrs. Mahan. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And thank you to Mr. Benson and Ms. Anderson and Mr. Stoff, who we've been at it for 20 years, maybe even longer. Um, um, one of the points that, that Mr. Benson touched on that I think we need to really um, define and hopefully have a role in, and we've all had conversations with the town manager and others about this, plus we also have a, a parallel time clock clicking of the NIPTES variance issuance from DEP of August 31st. So I'll leave it to Attorney Cunningham if, as we go down the road, any of this, you know, ties into what that 
uh, decision is and if there's any action from that, um, which is a whole nother agenda item for another night. Um, what I would like to do, uh, certainly would like to send the um, two letters that um, Mr. Benson, or one of the two, you know, see, see what my colleagues uh, think about, um, that, that he suggested, but um, I definitely want to do some follow-up, which I certainly will commit to. One of the things I'm very concerned about is, um, and I started to have informal conversations um, with senators, <laughs> and representatives, not just from Arlington, for possibly calling in a favor or something in the sense of I would like um, Arlington to have some sort of seat on the external stakeholders committee entity that gets formed. First, we have to find out what that is and what that means. And um, I wouldn't be surprised as we would guess or Mr. Benson that Arlington hasn't been considered in there, but we certainly do with the, the CSO issue, as well as we need to be in there in terms of the, the parking traffic impact, that when the Owl Wife is closed down and shuttered and whatever development, that's gonna be at least a year, if not two years, and we can kind of bury our head in the sand and say, oh, either people won't come to park there, or if they do, we'll, we'll give them a $15 ticket. Well, no, we need to be involved in that, because you know that needs to be addressed and, and uh, strategized uh, for that. So what I would like to do is send one or two of, or both of the letters, do follow up, which I certainly would commit to. What I am hoping is that um, if we can get, I would love ideally, and I know it's a high ask, the general manager, Philip Eng, and or and someone um, that comes with him that he or some ones that he deems appropriate to at the very least meet with um, the town manager, Mr. Feeney, you know, perhaps Ms. Attorney Cunningham, whomever, doesn't have to be me or any other politicians in the room to, to have the discussion to say, um, we want to talk about the external stakeholder holders committee that is being formed an entity. We want to make sure Arlington has a part in that. Arlington's concern would be threefold around environmental issues, CSO, around transportation, parking, um, when Al Wife comes down and, and something um, is, is being built, um, as well as representing definitely Arlington for the uh, individuals who are identified living, abutting the Al Wife and environmental justice communities, as well as downstream in Somerville. There's a lot of people when we've all zoomed in at different times to the meetings with Cambridge, with Somerville, MWRA. It's not just in Arlington, it's coming in to our homes. And, and I remember somebody said, if my toilet broke, and I said, and I abutted the owl wife, and I'm pretty sure the individual was from Somerville, and I decided to take what comes out of my toilet, or gets put in and needs to come out and throw it off the, out the window into the owl wife. I would be fined right away, and if I said to the state, well, as the, the MWRA is saying, it's not worth the money to spend, you wouldn't make a dent, and if I said, well, I don't have the money to fix my toilet, guess what, you can't say that, you gotta fix it. So I would like to send one, if not both of those letters, um, but I also would like to uh, do everything we can, and I, I know Mr. Diggins is our, uh, we spoke very briefly before the meeting about this, our representative, with the MBTA Advisory Committee. So going forward, I'm not asking for him tonight, any suggestions that he might have um, uh, to this endeavor, but I agree, Arlington really needs to, I mean, ideally, I would say no more CSO connections, as well as some part of the project actually addresses some sort of green stormwater, wastewater solution. So, but I think the number one goal before us is making sure our, at the very least, our town manager um, has uh, a seat at whatever the external stakeholders committee that will be discussing this, whether it's RFP or moving forward when the construction actually takes place. And I think the way we arrange any kind of a meeting, I don't wanna say, oh, we're gonna go for the Secretary of Transportation, she's a very competent individual, but that's just shooting way too high. But um, certainly work on, um, getting, I'd love to be able to get the general manager, but, but if not, somebody close in that echelon to that. And I certainly would commit to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Uh, anybody else? Yeah, 
Mr. Diggins. Yeah, just a, um, a few questions and then um, a comment or two. You know, interestingly, when I first heard about this, I was going to send both of you email to say, what do you think we could, do you think we could get a treatment plan out of this? You know, uh, uh, and, and for, but you're here, and then you mentioned this whole notion of, of sewage storage. I mean, so that is a lot less expensive, and, and you think that would, that would allow the T to perhaps do, or who, the, the developer to do a big project there? Well, I think there are two things. One is, it depends how big the tank is, yeah. and where exactly it can be located. Yeah. And I think a point to make about this is this is really an opportunity to leverage the end of the CSOs yeah. while they're doing all this work. Storage tank there, maybe a storage tank somewhere else, maybe some more sewage, sewer separation. Um, it would be nice if they put in a second constructed wetland because that whole area yeah. was once a wetland. A second constructed wetland would give you more opportunity to do sewage separation and send the storm water there and the sewage to MWA because as, as Ms. Anderson mentioned, they're way over capacity whenever there's a large storm. So you need to get more and more water out. So a second wetland, which they can build because it used to be a wetland, would be a good idea too. I don't see any of that in there. So it's a, a major. The other thing to think about too is this is going to be a large increase in Cambridge's tax revenues. They could use those tax revenues to, sue, to separate a lot more of the sewers. And, you know, they could do it ahead of time with tax anticipation bonds. There are a lot of ways that they can do it, but I don't see that on anybody's agenda except our agenda at this point. So sewer separation, and there's going to be tax money coming in for that. Storage, it could either end them or end the CSOs or make a huge dent in at least the MWR003 and all the Cambridge ones. Probably won't deal with the Somerville one. Right. It's a little far away. But if we could get the other ones done, that would be a tremendous victory. All right. you know, so are you in contact with any Cambridge um, folks who are working on this issue? Because my understanding is that it's not simply Arlington who cares about this issue, that there are residents in Cambridge. Uh, yeah, we, we have um, uh, Cambridge um, and Somerville activists who are allies of ours. So, um, you know, the uh, L Life Study Group, um, Green Cambridge, we're pretty close with Green Cambridge. Um, so, yeah, and uh, Somerville Green Open Streets. Um, what about Mystic River Watershed, Charles River Watershed? We meet with, Mystic. yeah, thank you. We meet with them, uh, we meet with them every single month um, with a, uh, in, at a CSO advocacy group. Um, and uh, meeting, we actually met, met with them last week and uh, we asked them, have you heard about this MBTA development? And they all said no. Oh, um, so it's, yeah, now's the time to get in on it, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. So a couple more questions, short ones. I mean, is the Conservation Law Foundation involved in this? We, we had our first meeting with a lawyer from the Conservation Law Foundation about three, 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 three weeks, weeks ago. Yeah. So we finally have gotten their interest. But that was before um, we learned about the MBTA proposals. So we need to go back to huh. them and bring them up to speed on that and have another um, meeting with them. And we're hoping that they may be willing to do something when we get the decision from DEP on the potential water quality variance. But they have made no commitments to us at this point. They do seem interested, though. They yeah. took a two and a half hour um, tour of the brook and yeah. sat down and talked about the issues. Yeah. Good, 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 good. You know, well, I mean, I'll certainly talk to the executive director at the MBTA Advisory Board and let him know about this and our concerns, I mean, and get maybe some advice. I mean, Brian Kane, Mr. Um, Feeney, you know, uh, as to how to maybe reach out to people in the team that you know, would listen, you know, um, be it the, the, um, the general manager or somebody else, you know, and, and I also know that the T kind of wants to uh, create an access point, me, you know, uh, in at Alewife, me, for doing repairs right now. They can only access the track, me, you know, uh, at Kendall, which is what causes 
you know, a lot of issues when we try to do track repair. I know they like to do that. And I forget who recently I heard this. It's like when you're trying to negotiate with someone you know, about something, sometimes if you add more to the pot, you, know, you can get buy-in, you know. So, so it's like you, you say you, you want to develop. Well, you know what? If you do this, you can develop even more, you know. Uh, so, so, um, so that's just it. I'll stop there. But I'm, I'm in favor, you know, of, of um, you know, a, a letter, you know, to our, uh, well, to whomever you prefer. I mean, I think both would be fine, you know, and certainly you can work it from some other angles, you know. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Uh, and either, okay. Um, so so I, could I make that as a motion? I didn't say that. I'd like to make a motion to send the two letters suggested. Sure. Okay. So we have a motion. To send the letter to the general manager, Philipping, and maybe it can just be one letter and CC Governor Mara Healy and I, along with others, but I definitely would uh, work with the manager, town council, and our deputy town council to come up with a draft letter to be distributed to uh, the rest of the board for final approval. Okay. Um, before, hang on one second, Mr. Benson. So we have a motion. Do we have a second on the motion? A second. Okay. Uh, the motion by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Diggins. Um, I, actually, I wanted to make a couple of comments on that. Um, so as, as for the letter, I certainly could support a letter regarding the CSOs. I think that the whole external stakeholder, as I read the MBTA um, description in the, the process section of, of, of what they what's attached to our agenda, that, that feels to me more like, okay, external stakeholders who are gonna review proposals and, and it adds transparency. It's almost further down, but I, I, I see the immediate issue with the CSOs. I mean, clearly from the alert that was issued yesterday, you see this is an issue. We all know it's an issue that affects Arlington. And, and I, I certainly can support raising that as a, as a major concern. I think some of the other points that Mr. Benson raised, I feel it's a little premature to be going down um, the road on the external stakeholder. I would like a copy of, of the suggestions and we can talk about this further, but I think in the short term, we, we've got a motion and a second for the letter regarding the CSOs. I think traffic down the road, we certainly want Mr. Feeney to have the ability, if this ever does get redeveloped, to, to learn what, what's the timing because there's a clear impact on Arlington if the Yale Life Garage closes in terms of impact on, on the neighborhood. But um, when I received the request, I viewed this in the short term as really strictly a CSO issue and, and a real need to, to get on the record on that. So I, I could support that, that type of letter for sure. And I don't know if that um, if there's any further comment based on what I said, but... Uh, no, and I'll definitely focus on that. My big okay. thing is I want to make sure, which I don't see it in there, that in the RFP to uh, developers, who are going to come back with their proposals that they have to take into consideration mediation, mitigation, yeah. whatever shun word sure. that should be there, the CSO issue. Yeah. That I don't see it in there right now. Okay. Yeah. And, and I think it's a good point. Like looking down the road, all right, potentially Cambridge has more revenue. I think that's real early to be talk, start thinking about talking to Cambridge about what they're going to do with potential revenue for a site they don't even control. We don't know what the MBTA is going to do. The last thing I would say is we've talked about reaching out to the state delegation. And, and we've talked about the CSO several times on the board since uh, in the past five or six years. I still think there should be some notification to the federal delegation too, because after all, this was the Clean Water Act that started, mm -hmm. that the, the cleanup of Boston Harbor is what is, is led to, to this issue. And, and I think for Cambridge and Somerville, it, it may not, it, it, there's a will, there's just not resources. And, and so you know, there may be a, a need for more attention from the federal government, potentially federal resources, but I think any opportunity we have to include our federal delegation in something this big and this important and, and with the public health need is, is it just makes sense because I, I, I think that's really a, a, a source of further resources um, for, for, for this problem. So I, I, you would put your hand up, Mr. Benson. I don't know if we're long past what you were gonna respond to no, the, uh, earlier, but. The, the only thing I would suggest is that the governor deserves a separate letter because that letter is the one that says you need to get the T and um, MWRA and DCR and DEP working together to solve this problem now that it's happening. So it, it's a letter, at least 
I mean, you don't have to do this, obviously, but it's laying out the same problem statement, but then saying, you know, one thing you can do, Governor, is pull all of your agencies and authorities that need to be part of this together. Yeah, okay, no, no, and, and that's what you were, yeah. Okay, so, in, in just to clarify for everybody, so the motion is, uh, I think for Mr. Feeney, maybe did we, are you offering to work with him to, to bring something back to the board at our yeah. next meeting to vote on? What, what I'm, within the next few days, my goal would be, will be by Friday, that I get the draft of two letters to Mr. Feeney for him to share with Attorney Cunningham, whoever else, clean it up a little bit, then get it to the board um, in its electronic packet as a draft and okay. go forward with to see if we want to vote one, both, okay. none, or something else. But okay. I, I'll definitely commit to coming up with the verbiage. Okay. That. All right. So that's that's the motion. It's been made and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So thank, thank you, you so for much. the presentation and, and for your continued advocacy. Thank you. Yeah, so it's a light night here at the select board. <laughs> a quiet August night. Uh, item four is the back to school bash. Um, and Zara Kanchen, I don't know if I have that pronunciation correct. I don't know if, if Zara is available She's on through Zoom. Okay, so if she can be promoted. I believe we've had a similar request um, for a different, uh, an into school. Uh, Hello. Hello. Good evening. Hello. Yeah, first, if you Hello, could. Hello, dear board members. Thank you so much for this opportunity. If, if I could just interrupt you for just one second. If you could just introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about the request, and if we have any questions, we'll get, get back to you on that. Sounds good. I'm Zara Khanjan. I'm the principal of Russian School of Mathematics in Arlington. And uh, our request is we submitted the application for the special event that we're going to organize uh, our back to school bash as we are celebrating the beginning of the school year. And we are applying, um, we uh, submitted the application for Wittermore Park on September 28th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. So that's uh, the event uh, will be for two hours. We will need some time before to prepare and a little bit more time to finish the event. So I would say from 10 a.m. maybe to 2 p.m. And the plan is we will be uh, rep representing our school there, having some entertainment for the kids, uh, some stations with math problems and some fun activities with them. And we're going to uh, uh, involve uh, other businesses from Arlington community, um, which are um, connected to kids' activities like craft, uh, arts and crafts, music, uh, ceramica, mosaic, something like that. We are waiting for your approval uh, with the time and uh, day to be able to reach out to these businesses as well. Okay, thank, thank you. Um, turn to the board for questions, comments, motions. I move approval. Okay. Second. Mr. Helmuth, any questions? Okay, on a motion uh, by Mr. Helmuth, seconded by Mrs. Mahan. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. That's it. That's a quick yeah. one. All right. Thank you very much. Good yeah, luck. Thank you so much. Yeah. Come join us on September 28th. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Bring the kids. Okay. Next, we have the consent agenda. I'm just going to read the headings on each one. Uh, item five is a request for a contract to drain layer license. There are four different companies requesting that. Item six is a, an acceptance of funds for the 2024 battle reenactment. Item seven is a Jason Russell House, Arlington Historical Society, Beer Garden Special One Day Beer License Amendments. Um, the first amendment is to change the time for the remainder of the season. It was one o'clock to six o'clock. The request is to change it to 1.30 to 6.30, 1.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. And a request for Arlington Town Day, serving time from 12 to 6.30. 12 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Item eight is a request for a special one-day beer and wine license 
on September 8th at Robbins Memorial Town Hall for a private event. Item nine is free parking in the Russell Common Lot and Railroad Lot for Arlington Town Day on September 21st, 2024. Item 10 are, is a request for temporary no parking signs on Bartlett Ave on September 21st, 2024. Item 11 is a special request for a special event, National Coffee with a Cup Day, October 2nd, 2024. Mr. Hurt? I'd like to move approval and just highlight item number six, which is the contribution by a local business leader bank to the 2024 battle reenactment that we had back in April. It was a very generous contribution and really allowed us to create the programming that we had that was very, very successful, which will roll into the 2025 um, battle, um, you know, it's more than just a battle reenactment, the 2025 20, celebration. And so it was really very generous by Leader Bank to, to allow that to happen, so. Thank, thank you, Mr. Hurd. Um, second uh, second by Mrs. Mahan. Just one comment. Certainly. Um, and I also know that um, I had a conversation with Mr. Feeney, who also, because I saw that in the governor's budget, there was um, money designated for um, the 250th celebration. And Mr. Feeney informs me that he, as well as the uh, committee, um, have already prepared either a grant or grants grant requ request to that particular um, fund. I'm blanking. I don't want to say the number that I think that it is because I'm going by memory, but it's it's a pretty sizable amount. So I just wanted to double check. I know what Mr. Feeney tells me is the truth, but the committee is also um, either submitting on its own or with the manager a, a, a request for that grant for that money. I don't want to say it out loud because then we jinx it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I did, so I'm not going to say anything of what I think you didn't it is. Hear that. But thank you for doing that. Okay. I'm all set. Second. Okay. Any other comments, questions? All right. So. We, Motion for approval of the consent agenda by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mrs. Mahan. All in favor say aye. 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 That is unanimous. Moving on, we have a series of appointments. We will start with item number 12 for the Council on Aging. Um, Elaine McNulty Knight um, is, I don't know if Ms. Knight is available through Zoom. Um, oh. I think she would just raise her hand if she's under a different name. What'd she say? I didn't understand. You say raise her hand. Oh, yeah. if she could raise her hand. Yeah, if you could raise her hand. I don't see her in there. Yeah, and and I, I forgot to mention at the beginning of the meeting, that voice you hear is yeah. Ms. Marr, our board administrator, who is participating remotely this evening. Okay, we're just going to check to see if she's available. They, they were sitting yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I was going to say, I thought I saw them both earlier. I lost hope. <laughs> okay, so yeah, hopefully we didn't scale them away with our two agenda items in an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So. Um, you want to table it and come yeah, back? Why don't, we, why don't we move on and we'll see if, even if they can participate through Zoom. Item, well, I'll go to item 13. The uh, LGBTQIA plus Rainbow Commission, Sarah Goodrich. Is Goodrich available? She'll be joining the other. Okay. Someone letting her she's, I think, yeah, is she being oh, promoted she's now? Or? Okay. Yeah, she's in. You know, I'm not sure why we're not seeing her. I mean, I can see her. You know. I'm here. Hello? Oh, <laughs> hi. That's good. Thank, thank you for joining us this evening. If you could just um, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and your interest in joining the Rainbow Commission. Sure. So I'm Sarah Goodrich. Um, I, live I live here in Arlington. I've lived here for about uh, 15 years, a little over 15 years. Um, and uh, I have two children in the elementary schools. Um, my wife and I have been to many of the Rainbow, um, the Rainbow Commission's activities. Our kids participate, um, and we really like 
what is being done. And so when a opportunity became available to join the commission, I stepped up and volunteered um, and hopefully, hopefully we'll continue to do good work. Thank, thank, thank you for your interest in serving. I, I will turn to board members. Uh, Mr. Diggins. Well, I, was, oh. I was pointing to Mr. Hallman, because oh, I, right, I saw Mr. his hand go up first, V, so. Okay, whoever would like to go first. <laughs> thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I would like to move approval. I would like to thank uh, Sarah for, for stepping up. That is what makes Arlington such a, a great place to live, is that we have so many volunteers who are willing to, to pitch in. Um, I enjoyed reading, reviewing your resume very much and your comments just now. We are delighted that your family is part of our community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Uh, Mr. Diggins. And I'll second it. I, I've seen Sarah you know, in action already at a commission uh, meeting. You know, it's a great attitude, you know, very straightforward. And if anything, I'll remember no frozen corn syrup on a stick. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I'll do frozen hoagies, but no frozen corn syrup on a stick. You know? So thank you for joining. In reference to the ice cream truck. <laughs> okay. 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 Uh, Okay, so on a motion by Mr. Helmuth, seconded by Mr. Diggins, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, congratulations and thank you again for your interest in serving. Thank you very much. Okay, item 14, uh, Constable uh, Jeffrey Silton for a term to expire January 31st, 2027. Is Mr. Silton Checking to see if he's available through Zoom. Hello. He should connect it. Yep. Yeah, I, I'm on right now. Yes. Yep. Good evening, Mr. Silton. Uh, yeah. How are you? I guess my video isn't coming through. Yeah, we can hear you, but we don't see you on the video. But if, if you're having a video problem, the audio is fine. You're coming in loud and clear. Okay. Yeah. And so, again, if you, we have your um, application. I, 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 Believe I think we heard from Mr. Feeney on this, but if you could believe you're a constable in another jurisdiction and um, you're applying for, for that appointment in Arlington, is that correct? Correct. Uh, I'm a Newton resident. I've been a uh, Newton constable for 27 years. I'll be approved for my 10th time this fall. I'm also a Watertown constable for eight years. I'm also a constable for the town of Wellesley for two years now. Okay, great. And, and, and this is, and we have the memo from Mr. Feeney requesting the board's appointment of his, his appointment of Mr. Silton. So I'll turn to the board now. Mr. Hurd? Move approval. Um, as someone that uses constables from time to time, it's good to see a more robust list than we had a few years ago, which I think was zero. <laughs> um, but um, maybe we'll get to work together, but happy that you chose to serve in Arlington. Great, thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, for a second. Second. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Any other questions or comments from the board? Okay, on a motion for approval by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mrs. Mahan, all in favor say aye. 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 Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, board. Thank you for your time. Sure. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> Okay, so I feel badly about our Council on Aging appointment because they were, uh, they, they were here. And, and um, why don't we go on and, and see if they become available. I may suggest a, a, maybe a little different procedure given the fact that they actually showed up tonight. Yeah. Uh, but um, we, we'll continue on for now. Um, item 15 for approval, a wine and malt alcohol license, Drad Group Inc. for 352A Massachusetts Avenue. I believe the applicant may be joining us remotely. Do we see, did we see them in the, in the waiting room or? Okay. Yes, they okay. should be connecting. It's okay. just looks Great. like it's taking them a couple minutes. Thank you, Ms. Moore. Copy. Yeah. No, this 
I was just wondering if it shows oh. up. It's like, that's... No Missy knows August 16th, huh? <laughs> If you would just like to introduce yourself. Yeah, we just have a, we have an issue with Zoom right now. We don't, I, I think the applicant has been promoted through Zoom, but if, if you're there, if you could introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about the application. Okay. Oh, great. Uh, hi, my name do you get, okay, do you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes, yes we can. Oh, okay, good. Uh, because you know, I'm a little bit, you know, the difficulty to hear me. Okay, so my name is Vishnu Dabari, and uh, I have a business here in uh, Arlington. Uh, it is called Makalu Nepali and Indian Cuisine, uh, 352 Suite A, Mass Avenue in Arlington. So I applied for Malchan beer, so wine and beer application uh, for my business. Okay. And we see the application, we see the inspection reports um, that were made part of the uh, agenda. Okay. So, so with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to board members for any questions or comments. Yeah. Not really, just wondering about uh, Oh, uh, you know the. Sorry, I think I'm in the middle. Sorry. Yeah, no, no. We yeah, we have everything here. I'm actually asking board members if they have any questions for you or any motions. Um, and I'll turn to Mr. Hurd. I'll move approval. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. I'll second. Sub okay. Subject to the conditions, and I know that Mr. Oh, I can't see his name. I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Let me get your name so I say it correctly. Uh, Mr. Dabadai, that um, you have copies of letters oh, from Vishnu Dabadi. Yes, so you have the copies of the letters. So uh, I'm seconding the motion to approve, but there are some conditions that our approval are saying yes that you have to do uh, regarding, uh, I think it's the planning department and fire department. So. Um, so we're approving yes, Mr. Hurd is making the motion and I'm second it, seconding it and you just have to, I know you have the letters, just go through them and make sure all those conditions are taken care of and then you're all set to, and you'll have the approval for the license for beer and wine. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Okay, Mohan. that's wonderful. Definitely. I'll, I'll okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Any other? All right, so a motion for approval by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mrs. Mahan, subject to all conditions. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, best of luck with the business. It, we had a little trouble with the, with the audio, but we just approved the application. So best, best of luck. Okay. Yeah, sometimes we have issues through Zoom and uh, I think I think Still everybody <laughs> we, we could hear each other by the end of it. Okay, item 16 for approval: Common Victuallers License, Fiesta Bites Pizzeria LLC, 1323 Massachusetts Avenue. Uh, and I believe the applicant again is joining us through Zoom. Mar, it is, I don't know if, if are they, are you yeah. promoting? Okay, you're promoting. It's like Mr. they're Hernandez? having trouble connecting. Yeah. Okay. okay. You, you won't see them until he speaks. Right. Uh, oh, because yeah, of, yeah, it's differently configured because. Oh, okay, all right, all right, now I get it. Okay, so because Ms. Meyer is remote, we won't see everybody remotely. Until they start speaking. Until they start gotcha. speaking, yeah. Okay.
Mr. Hernandez, can you hear us? Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah. If you could just. Oh, good. Yeah. Good evening. Um, good. Yeah. Good. If you could just um, tell us a little bit about um, your application and, and uh, the uh, the new business that you uh, would like approval for up at the, up in the Heights. Yes. Yeah, so my. Oh, we just lost you. Did you just mute yourself? Uh, let me get a no. Bit. No. We can hear you now. Okay. So my name is Asael Sanchez Hernandez, and um, I'm the new owner of the old Bosto Bits and Gyro. And we're looking forward to make a new uh, impression for this old business that has been in a lot of ups and downs for the last few years. Great. Thank you. And, and we have the inspection reports that we received from the various departments. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to board members for any motions or questions. Mr. Helmuth. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for your interest in doing business in Arlington. I wanted to ask you, I, I know that you've reviewed the paperwork, but I, I particularly wanted to point out the, uh, the comments by our economic development coordinator regarding the existing signs on the building are not um, in compliance with our zoning bylaw. Are you aware of that, and do you agree to uh, make uh, um, bring those signs into compliance before you open. That's what we're working on with uh, the sign company that we have, and we also talking to the sign uh, to the uh, I forgot her name, Katie, I believe, uh, because it's no way to remove the signs for now, or whatever we have to do, we're willing to adjust it so we can be able to operate. Good. Um, and th thank you, sir. I wanted to ask the town manager if that seemed like a, a reasonable uh, response and course of action, because that, that, that was a, uh, one of the thornier issues we had in that location, among many others, as, as Mr. Mahan just uh, suggested. Uh, Mr. Feeney. Yes, Mr. Helmuth. Uh, the applicant is actively engaged in discussions with both the planning department and inspectional services and has applied for a signed permit to Great. ensure that the new location will finally be compliant with the town's zoning bylaw for signage. Excellent, good, good. Well, thank, thank, uh, thank you, Mr. Merhandis, for, um, for your awareness of that. And I'm happy to move approval subject to all conditions from all uh, reporting agencies that are before us. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Thank you, thank you, guys. Uh, Mr. Hurd? I'll second that. And just to briefly follow Mr. Helmuth's comment that is not just specific to this business location, but you, it's good that you're working with the town to make the property comply with the sign policy, and we'll take your word that you will keep the property in compliance because a lot of bu in, uh, businesses, in order to open, they have to be compliant with <laughs> the sign policies, but up and down Mass Ave, slowly but surely, a lot of businesses... <laughs> In even ones that have sat in this room and promised us to comply go come out of compliance so you know we we don't have the infrastructure to you know send somebody up and down Mass Ave every day to to police that so we just ask you as a business that's coming in to town to just be respectful of the bylaws that we have in place thank, thank you mr. Hurd uh, mrs. Mahan and um, just two quick questions um, one to the applicant, first welcome. Um, I look forward to um, you being able to open and um, we all know how difficult it is to uh, have a business, especially a restaurant business and the commitment that's needed for that as well as all the steps you need to take. Um, and I take from your remarks, you're also aware uh, of the uh, items highlighted by the fire department and you're working with them uh, previously, the fire department couldn't get inside this business and had to sort of do it from outside looking through the window. But am I right that you were also working with the fire department on the conditions in that letter? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we have made the arrangements uh, as a fire pool stations and also the door in the back. I think it was a problem with um, the landing or stuff like that. So the owner of the building he has made the uh, arrangements for the back door and it's one of the million dollar questions that i have if we have to relocate the exit sign and other stuff but i'm assuming we have to talk to the fire department to see what we're going to do about this 
to make everything the right way. We want, uh, definitely we want to start with the right foot. Yeah. And I would love to do whatever I have to do on my hands to commit your expectations as a town as, and also as a new um, member of your community. Okay. And if you can just help coordinate, arrange, so that um, the representative from the fire department through with you and the owner or with the owner can um, get into the business so that, because they can't do the inspection from the street. And I just have a question for um, the, either the chair or through the chair to the town manager, um, just because it was an issue with the previous business. Uh, the Board of Health, may, I don't know if it's because it's printed out, but I don't have a report here. Um, is, is, it may just be missing. So I'm assuming Board of Health is aware they've made comments and as part of this motion, it's also subject to any conditions that they might have imposed, if I may, Mr. Chair. Yeah, uh, Mr. Feeney. That is correct, Mrs. Mahan. The applicant is in touch with the Board of Health. They are undergoing the typical plan review process. Unfortunately, we were unable to get the written inspection report uh, from the health department to the select board in time for posting of the uh, meeting materials. But in conversation, I learned that the condition was going to be what you would standard, what you would see under standard conditions, and uh, the written inspection report would be available uh, later this week. Okay, and if we could definitely get a copy of that, only because not this current business proposal or individual, but previous um, circumstance that we dealt with. Um, I know people came up to me and asked why, you know, I always say I read everything and I'm on top of everything. Why um, concerning the Board of Health aspect as well as, you know, I understand planning department and signage. So when I didn't see it in here. So I definitely, as the rest of the board, want to see that. And, um, and please to the applicant, I'm only asking these questions not because of your application, but because of the previous um, proprietor who unfortunately we both had had a very bumpy road um, but now it's a new day a new page um, absolutely and, and mr. Um, Sanchez Hernandez is um, working with all our town depart departments as indicated that we'll see the report from the Board of Health later on in the week um, from the town manager or chair because I definitely want to be able to see that thank you thank, thank, thank you Mr. and Hines. I'm assuming and we'll somebody incorporate that this. into yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Um, so and, and I want to wish you the best of luck they will have the motion first though on a motion by Mr. Helmuth seconded by Mr. Hurd um, subject to all conditions all in favor say aye. Aye. aye aye all right that's approved and we wish you the best of luck and um, uh, with, with the site and, and uh, you, we can really feel your enthusiasm for turning things around up there so so good luck Thank you very much, and you guys have a good evening. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, moving on to open forum. Except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. Is anybody in the chambers who wishes to be heard in open forum? Yep, come. Come on up. Made it. My name is Kathy Corbett. I live at 17 Mill Street, Millbrook Square Apartments. Uh, it's nice to see you in person instead of mm -hmm. on my small TV. Um, three minutes, okay. Uh, as part of the high school uh, and town decisions, but uh, I think the high school and traffic congestion, although there always has been, as, at uh, the end of my driveway, 17 Mill Street, which is a long driveway to the um, entrance to the building, and also includes handicap parking spots, which I have one of. I'm sorry, I injured my back and I have to sit up. Um, I 
after going through three and a half years conservative estimate of loud construction right outside my window with, that coincided with me having serious illness and needing to rest, but also needing to um, get out and come back to um, my parking space to where I, someone, I would go to her house and she would take me to treatments. And um, I thought, oh, at last, I wasn't hearing construction trucks between High Rock and then the high school. I thought we were done. Um, but I walked out one day and there are now um, signal lights, full overhead signal lights as in intersection, which we aren't quite because my driveway is like this and Millbrook Lane is like this, which is the road that this is the entrance to the high school. Um, I was told by the principal last week, who I just happened to go and ask if someone could talk, um, that that's going to be the permanent uh, entrance to the high school. I There seems to be some question about that. Um, <coughs> I asked our manager of the apartment complex, it's senior housing and disabled. Um, and HUD, privately owned, but HUD subsidized. Um, I asked the manager of our apartment building to look into it, and she actually spoke with someone who said they were the supervisor uh, down on the site on, on Mill Street, where there were now not just the hanging <laughs> intersection um, lights, but the lower um, street lights, I don't know how else to put it, uh, and then pedestrian lights. And the point is that this is at the end of the driveway that I need to come in and out of. Um, it's stressful for me because, and it's all done, and I know there may be nothing to do about it, but it's stressful for me because I do have multiple medical appointments. I try to be early, take as much time as possible, etc. And also because it's a driveway. Uh, and there are other complications that I don't have time in this forum to tell you that make it narrow. Um, many other than people who park there, construction trucks, uh, landscaping trucks, uh, people bringing their elderly parents, groceries, et cetera. And it makes it so that there's not always, it's wider than a normal driveway, but it's not always a, you're not always, um, it's not a two lane driveway. There are a number of signal lights, 10, the last I counted, uh, you know, some of them, the four light configuration, et cetera. Um, and then since the street doesn't, across the street doesn't quite up, uh, I'm sorry, I'm tired. It's Does nice it, to see you. And, and, and I'm sorry for the hour. I, I actually, you had left a message for me at my home today. I'm sorry. No, no I problem. I, I got it when I came home at the end of the day, but what I'd be willing to do is follow up with you directly and maybe we can get you some further answers and I can hear some more of your concerns because we're, unfortunately, this is a short time I'm period almost, for open I'm forum. Almost but, done. Okay, you, you go right ahead, but I, I, I'll still um, follow up with you and, and try to get you some additional information and, um, and maybe um, coordinate something to, to further the, address your concerns. I, my understanding is the light is short time for our driveway. There are uh, the lights for the Mill Street, two uh, parts of Mill Street plus the other uh, street. There still is a crosswalk that doesn't line up with these things. I am just concerned that it's not solved the problem that it may have been um, constructed floor 
and that it may be more uh, difficulty for people like myself. There are others that have expressed concern also. Um, I should have timed this at home. Uh, there are many, there are other details. Okay. Um, yeah. And the principal also said he sent out he sent out way back notices to the abutters, which apparently we are across the street, um, and I never received nor did anybody I know in, in our building, nor did the manager. Um, I would. The point is. We are elders. I have worked all my life helping. Uh, I don't usually say this, um, but I've worked all my life helping as a social worker and mental health counselor, uh, people in different communities uh, and different populations, children and families and, and elders. And I sometimes think we become invisible, especially if we are older and poor and don't have a lot of power. Um, it is hard for um, people like myself even, but harder for a lot of people to come and speak to the board. Um, so I appreciate your time. Um, I appreciate you coming in tonight. And as I said, um, per our rules, we don't respond here at the meeting, but I will I be in touch with you tomorrow and I, I will coordinate with Mr. Feeney too in terms of um, answering questions and, I, and see if we can I get you more information. I'll just add, uh, for Mr. Diggins' uh, theory, um, in the future, uh, please, there's one uh, thing being considered, the house on between CVS and the church. Please don't have construction trucks go down Millbrook Lane and take my health away further um, and others. I'm not the only one. Um, and uh, and please, I know we have this great senior center, but I can't use it. But please, um, think of elders in the community. I'm not saying that you don't. I, but this is a case that we were never notified. We were never notified about the lights, and it's very stressful as we get older. Thank you, thank you for taking thank the time to come much. in tonight. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you for your work. Okay. Is there anybody else for open forum? Anybody through Zoom? Seeing no answer. Okay. That, that ends open forum this evening. Uh, we are now moving on to our last <laughs> four uh, items. Uh, three of them involve TAC. Uh, first, item 17, uh, TAC recommendations, speed limits, and I believe our vice chair from the Transportation Advisory Committee is here this evening. Thank you Hi. for-, for yeah. I'm joining. Jim Stubby. I've been in Arlington about 10 years now. I live over in Edge Hill Road. I'm the vice chair of the Transportation Committee. Thank you, Mr. Stubby, for, for your patience. This is a oh, absolutely. much longer it's meeting than It's fascinating me. to come and watch. I, have to, <laughs> I actually enjoy it sometimes. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> So, so I'm here tonight to come back to you all at, at a request you sent in tax direction back in January through Mr. Feeney uh, about the speed limit on Broadway particularly, but then expanded to say, let's look at all the speed limits that are over the town like 25. And as part of that activity, I led the working group that actually did this work for TAC. So we went out and looked and you know, pretty much every single one of those speed limits is covered by something called a special speed regulation. And if we go back to 2017, we rewind and go, OK, the select board said, yes, it we're a 25 mile an hour town. But at the time, we didn't touch the special speed regulations. We left them in place, which means all of the speed limits that are over 25 have been in place ever since. And one of the things they did, we don't have to show it, but I'll just talk through it. So if you hit the Arlington borders on almost all of the major feeders, it says town wide 25, 35. 30, town-wide, 25, 30, 25, 30, town-wide. It's confusing as all get out for people who are driving through town. God, I don't even know what the speed limit is. I've been, I've been driving here 10 years on Summer Street or on Pleasant Street where you've got six speed limit changes. It, it just leaves the drivers not really knowing. So they go with the flow of traffic. Right? 
So our recommendation to come back was to remove all of those special speed regulations. Anything that says you're better, you can go faster than 25, we'll remove those regulations or rescind them is what the official term is. You know, they were put in place back in the 70s. There were different times and needs then. It doesn't match with Connect Arlington plan. It certainly doesn't match to any Vision Zero goals where you want to reduce you know, the speeds down to really, we really don't want any pedestrian deaths and that type of thing. So. Basically, the recommendation is to remove those, put up 25 mile an hour signs. Actually, it's called thickly set, it's an orange and black sign that says thickly settled district at 25 miles an hour. And I know you may all have heard or not heard over the years that the signs don't do anything. Well, the fact is the, the reference that we cited in the actual memo is from the city of Seattle. They put up somewhere in the neighborhood of 5,000 25 mile an hour signs when they made this switch, and they showed a 20% reduction in crashes, 20% reduction in injuries, and approximately 10% reduction in average speeds at 55 and, you know, the 50% mark in the 85th percentile. So they actually showed real data, they, they collected real data, but they put those signs up every quarter mile. So they put a lot of signs up. You know, it, so that's part of our proposal. We're, we want to start with, with Broadway and Park, because, you know, they've got a lot of public you know, visibility and people who are very interested in actually making those corridors more safe. So we figured we'd start with them, prove out the process, work out how to rescind things, and then come back to you all with a list for the rest of the things and say, okay, this is the prioritized list we'd like to work them in. It takes a little bit of time to go through the rescind process. I know John Alessi had talked to the folks up in Andover and they were saying it was between three and six months to work through MassDOT to get the rescind in place. So, so even if we snap our fingers, it's not gonna happen instantaneously, but we, we should get the process started. It's kind of the bottom line. So we do have a process that we had put in place. John was thinking he might be the, the one on the town staff to actually coordinate, but you know that's all of, all of the town, your decision as to what. Uh, the signage we talked about, and that we also, TAC already did the before speed studies on both Broadway and Park, no surprises on the numbers coming back. Actually, Broadway looks pretty reasonable speed-wise, given the speed limits. It's nothing's out of alignment with the speed limits that are there today. So that's our before study. You know, do we really expect to see a change? Certainly on Park, I would hope we would see a change. Broadway, we might not see so much. But it's really, we're, it's really a policy decision we're looking at tonight. It's like we, we took the first step in 2017. This is kind of finishing that. It's taken the other step to match up. I'm happy to answer any questions. I didn't want to go go on. Okay, no, thank you, thank you, Mr. Stubby. I, um, Mr. Feeney, I don't know if you had anything to add to that. I, I, I think the discussion before the meeting was just as you said. We'd start with Park Ave and, and Broadway, and that that was consistent with um, what you, your understanding was as well, Mr. Feeney. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> that is correct, okay. and I would note that if the board chose to move forward this evening. We are prepared to uh, send that letter on the board's behalf to begin the process uh, forthwith. Okay, great. And, and I will start with the board uh, with Mr. Diggins. Uh, well, I'd like to first off express my appreciation to Mr. Stubby for uh, all the work that he did as part of the, the um, subcommittee that worked on this. I mean, when we got it, you know, we were under the impression that we really need to move quickly on this. I mean, and, and I know one of the um, perhaps um, Concerns was that we moved really fast, we, but it's it's not so much that we moved fast as much as it is that we had a lot of meetings in a short amount of time. We, you know, I think it was probably like four uh, meetings in addition to TAC meetings in about a six uh, week period. And, and Mr. Stubby, he just he, he did so much work on his own. He said that whenever we had a meeting, he just had a lot of material all prepared for us. We, and and uh, there was really good conversation uh, in, in the meeting. So I just really, uh, just really grateful uh, for okay. what you did. And I appreciate you and John and Scott Smith and Ofer as well. All yeah, everyone was, there was plugged in and yeah. really wanted to drive it. Yeah, it was, it was, it was a good a, team. Yeah, so. it was definitely a good team, Ian. And, and so, and I mean, I hesitate to make any motions on this because we, we I signed off on it. So, so, uh, uh, but, but uh, certainly we'll be happy to second a motion on it. You know. Uh, so. Yeah, we, I mean, I don't think we mind deferring to you for, for no. a motion to just get this going either. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, for sure. Well, so yeah, I, 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 I'll make a motion to support you know, all the recommendations being in, in this. You know, uh, yes, yes, let's get started you know, and figure out what we need to do with MassDOT in order to uh, um, rescind them all. I, mean, I think it will be really good to have you know, a consistent speed limit in, in town as much as possible, meaning that you know, you know, the top should be 25 you know, except for you know, the roadways that are owned by MassDOT me you know, that are at 30, but we can't change those. You know, there will be some areas where um, it's 20, you know, but I feel it's okay to to have those. You know, uh, uh, you know I, I wouldn't worry about rescinding those. Front huh? I said the, the road he's referring to is frontage road. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I, I, I can see the question on your. Yeah. Your no, thank you. no, no, thanks. Which thanks, road thanks, is that? Thanks. I appreciate that, I mean, and, and I certainly also we would like for the group to. Uh, look into you know bringing down the speed limit townwide on local roads. I mean, so so not the collectors. I mean, not like Gray Street. I mean, you know, but but streets like Windsor. I mean, you know, which I live on. I mean, you know, which are tend to be short streets anyway. You know, uh, and and I think it sends a signal uh, to everyone that we really do care about the you know, safety. I mean, uh, and and I mean, Cambridge is doing it. You know, Somerville, I, mean, I think, is doing it. Boston um, is looking into it. And to my surprise, you know, one of the counselors that I would not have thought would have suggested 15 miles per hour did. You know, uh, I'm not suggesting that, but I'm just saying it, that uh, it is something that that Boston is, is considering. I mean, it may be a little more of a challenge there because some of the roads. Are, are, are longer, uh, but uh, but so 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 that's that's my long-winded motion. Okay, <laughs> thank, thank thank you, Mr. Diggins. Uh, Mrs. Mahan, a second. Any one question? Sure. Um, thank you so much. Um, as Mr. Diggins already highlighted, um, just with the materials we have here before us, um, we have a lot of information. Um, I feel like I was at the meeting, um, and and the only thing that that, that you do touch on here, and I realize the answer is no, but you're going to continue to discuss it. But I just want to bring it to light. When you talk about the 20 mile per hour zones, which are school and safety zones. And when I first read that on page six, I'm like, I'm trying to think where Arlington safety zones are. And then when I got to seven, we don't have any, right? Just one. Just one. It's so one it's in East Arlington, next okay. to the park. I think but, it's Magnolia. So we do have yeah. under, under the what you provided to us for the 20 mile per hour for school and safety zones. I didn't realize we had any. And we actually have overlapping SSRs in school zones. I think the school zone signs probably weren't there when the SSRs went in, my guess. So those signs went up and they never got taken down. So, okay. so um, maybe moving forward in the next year, year and a half, whatever the committee deems appropriate because you have a lot of other things to deal with. And I see that you highlighted that Lexington Center is a, is a safety zone, um, which I do slow down when I get there, coming from a really wide open, mm -hmm. almost like here we go, speed racer kind of mass ab. But um, so moving forward, I didn't realize we had one, so we do have one safety zone. Any recommendations from TAC in the future regarding expanding that or um, further defining it so that it's an option that the town can consider, the board can consider, and or any areas um, in Arlington may want to put in a request in the future. So thank you, and I did second. Thank, thank, thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Any other comments? Okay. Oh, sure, Mr. Helen. Thank I want to add my appreciation for, for the speed of addressing this and how much work went into it. it is the, the amount of work is evident. The quality is excellent as usual. And um, I think by way of context, the Broadway neighbors you know, kicked this off early back in January, but then as the board became aware with um, some additional unfortunate pedestrian crashes on Park Avenue that regardless of whether Steve Speed was involved in those, there's a long history of, of problems there and the neighbors really organized and, and brought to the board's attention uh, that we needed, we really needed to guide the town into doing something about that corridor. And I just wanna emphasize that this is a first step that I think it makes a lot of sense. I live up there and, you know, I've never thought that a 35 mile an hour zone for two blocks made any sense and certainly doesn't save anybody appreciable time. But I think the way you describe this as it's just confusing for drivers, um, this is a, it's a risk factor I'm very happy to eliminate and I want to express my appreciation to the neighbors in that corridor who have um, supported this particular change. I think they'll be very happy. 
and uh, know that more is coming, that the town manager has done a remarkable job of marshalling resources and planning and budget, and, and it's now in our forthcoming town manager goals that the board will be publishing soon uh, to, to continue the work, the study of that corridor, and to take up with the traffic calming issues throughout town, and I think that in the next coming months and year or two, the public will see a renewed focus from, from the town that the public has really asked for which is that we will be taking a much newer and, and I think more innovative look at our traffic safety issues. So um, this is a really good first step. I'm thrilled to support this. Thank, thank you, Mr. Helmer. Thank, thank you, Mr. Helmer. Um, okay, and I, I would just say thank you again for the comprehensive report and, and as, as Mr. Helmer said, for Park Ave in particular, that um, I think we all became more aware of that, um, that and that change going to 35 and it's, once you start getting going, it's very easy to get up to 40, and that's what we don't want. So, so that change, and, and uh, the neighbors became very involved in, as a first step, uh, Park Avenue Broadway. I'm happy to support this in the, in the process. So on a motion for approval by Mr. Diggins, seconded by Mrs. Mahan, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, great. So great. that's item 17, and we have you here for a couple more. Uh, yeah, I don't 18. know whether Laura, Laura may be on the phone, actually. Okay. Oh, are you doing the other ones, or, or just... I, I can, if Laura's not on the okay, phone, fine. I can do it, but... Yeah, uh, item... I think she was on the phone, so. Okay, thank, well, thank, thank you very much for coming. I'll sit and watch, but... Uh, I'll stick around. <laughs> item 18 is a TAC recommendation regarding Grace Street and Churchill Ave intersection, and this is another one where we had received correspondence from um, people who live in, in, and use that intersection. So, with that, um, I think Laura's going to join us. Oh, hello, it's oh, Laura Swan. Yes. Oh, Good Jared evening. Hi, thank Good you for evening. joining us. Yeah, we're on item 18 now, so if you wouldn't mind presenting um, the recommendation, and then we, can, we may have some questions. Oh, of course. Um, I also want to thank Jim for showing up in person today. Um, so when TAC looks at some of these uh, potential crosswalk locations, we check, is it a safe place to cross? Can pedestrians see and be seen in time for vehicles to actually stop for them? Um, are there safe facilities on the other side? Uh, you can't create a crosswalk and a handicap ramp to nothing, to, to no sidewalk. And um, how many pedestrians are crossing there? Um, if you have an underutilized crosswalk, drivers will begin to ignore it. And instead of creating driver awareness, it can create complacency from drivers. So with that in mind, I'll talk about our recommendations for Gray Street. We actually went and did pedestrian counts on three different crossings, three different roads along Gray Street, Endicott Road, uh, Valley Road, and also Churchill Avenue. And um, previously, TAC had done a larger study of Gray Street and had identified Valley Road as a place that had a safe place to cross that had enough um, sight distance, enough um, sort of like distance from the two different hills for pedestrians to be seen. So we looked at that one more closely. Um, at this time, our recommendation is no action in regards to adding a crosswalk to these locations and I'll go through some of the reasons why. We do recommend repainting the white edge lines that used to be along Gray, uh, Gray Street from Bartlett Avenue to Endicott Avenue, and that should visually narrow the road and perhaps act as a passive traffic calming measure. Um, so to go into some of the observations of Gray Street, it is wide at Valley Road, there's Good site visibility there, but there is a vertical curve or a hill in layman's terms, um, both to the east and another one to the west. There is no sidewalk on the south side of Gray Street from Churchill Avenue to Valley Road. Um, there are children who cross Gray Street at Valley Road to get to a school bus stop, but most of the children who are walking alone are headed to Audison Middle School and they didn't cross uh, Gray Street along the stretch. Most of the people that we did observe crossing were adults, particularly adults walking dogs, uh, I think towards Monomany Rocks Park. 
And there were very few vehicles along Gray Street that were parked that could have blocked or obscured pedestrians trying to cross. So we did three different observations and none of these streets had enough people crossing to um, meet our threshold for recommending a crosswalk. And it seems very unlikely that an adult walk walking their dog is going to go you know, a block out of their way to use a crosswalk when they seem to be able to you know, find their way across the street and um, do so uh, safely. And the one recommendation that we did come up with was the fact that the, the street is very wide there. At one time, there were white lines that narrowed it visually, and we think that those should be repainted. Hopefully that will cue people that um, when, when a lane is narrower, they feel like they should go a little bit slower, and that would be our recommendation. Okay. Are there any questions you have for me about the memo? Um, yeah, uh, Mr. Helmuth? Uh, thank, thank you, Ms. Swan. Thank you for the work. Um, mm -hmm. I know it's been, actually it's been a year and a half since the residents came to us uh, from this, so I, I appreciate this follow-up. Uh, but despite the time that has passed, I remember the, the uh, intensity of the parents' concern and the large number of residents who wrote to us in support of that concern about the, the uh, very frightening incident where a child was almost struck by a car. Um, so, so this follow-up is, is important and needed. Um, I wanted to, to make sure I understand your uh, recent reanalysis of this. So were there any locations in that vicinity that if you didn't consider pedestrian counts, would would meet other require would meet all the other requirements for a crosswalk, or are you saying that d even despite that, they're really even at Valley Road, there's not there there's a there are compliance reasons with regulations. At Valley Road, there are compliance reasons. There's not a sidewalk on the south side. Crosswalks have to be handicap accessible. Um, so basically, you would be sending um, someone who's handicapped across a road to, you know, no, no sidewalk. They're a the handicap ramp to nowhere or to nothing. You know, there's not a sidewalk that continues along um, Valley Road. It's a private way towards uh, Menominee Rocks Park from there. And so um, they would have to be in the street or on a, like a dirt path if they crossed there. Um, I think that Endicott Road was a, fairly close to the vertical crest of the hill, and that can create issues with um, sight, with you know drivers not being able to see over the hill and to see pedestrians in the crosswalk. So I think that TAC had previously looked at the sight distances for um, each of the cross streets along Gray Street and had said that Valley Road had the best sight distance, the best um, sort of visibility along this stretch of road. But um, we saw very few people. I think that the highest number of people we saw was 10 or no, 15 people an hour on the weekend. And those were mostly adults. Um, in my observations, I also looked at the number of um, people crossing um, across, like uh, the side streets, and there weren't like more people were walking along Gray Street than were actually um, okay. using the stretch of road to cross. So most of the people. I think they were, they'd picked a side of the road before they um, had reached uh, Churchill Avenue or Endicott Road. And um, there just were not that many walkers, yep. very few children crossing here. Um, in my notes attached to the memo, we do note whenever the, one of the pedestrians is um, a kid or someone in a stroller, and um, we didn't observe any um, school-age children crossing without a parent. In fact, we saw very few school-age children uh, out there 
walking on Gray Street. Okay, well, that, that's very helpful. Thank you. Um, I wonder if I could suggest, pending the concurrence of my colleagues, to ask TAC, uh, or first, you know, and ask you if, uh, if, if you believe that crosswalks are not an appropriate solution here. Uh, I think that the repainting the, the, the uh, road uh, lane stripe is an excellent idea. And, Mr. and through, the town, uh, through the chair, actually, that asked the town manager, has, because has, that's a frequent road that I bike and walk, has there been a restriping done uh, 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 recently on that road, or am I just imagining an improvement already? Mr. Feeney? Uh, I <clears throat> am not sure off the top of my head, but our, what we call long line, our long line painting contract has been uh, underway for a few months now, so yeah. could be true, but if not, we yeah, can make sure yeah. that uh, this scope of work is uh, on the list to be completed. Yeah, because that, that, I mean, that clearly makes a lot of sense. Um, but but again, getting back to my question um, to, to Ms. Swan is, could the TAC contemplate any other solutions to address this? You know, I, I, I understand that you're a data-driven team, and that's to your credit. Um, my view as a policymaker is that we do need to pay attention to the data, but we also need to pay attention to the potential severity and risk, um, even if it's a low frequency uh, crossing. And I think that the situation that's described to us, the reason it resonated with many of us um, back, you know, back in, in uh, the, the spring or, or early part of 2023 when this came to us, um, is, is that you know, the, the speeds on that road can be uh, similar to Park Avenue in that cars can really get going because of the hills, because of the sight lines. Um, and so any, any potential crash could be a really bad one, particularly with a younger person. So do you think that if TAC uh, took another bite at this, could, are there other uh, perhaps signage, perhaps other strategies that uh, you could come up with that might address the situation that was brought before us? Ms. Swan? Uh, okay, so I think that slowing cars down um, creates definitely more safety for pedestrians and other vulnerable users. Um, we also are looking at other new ways of doing neighborhood traffic calming and Gray Street could be considered for additional measures, perhaps things like a chicane or um, other ways of doing traffic calming could be considered. Um, but again, the risk of putting in a, something like a crosswalk when it might give people a false sense of security and it's uh, not in a safe location um, would be discouraged, I think, by most uh, best engineering practices. But slowing drivers down, um, I do things like repainting the white stripes or perhaps even having the, um, the roadway move laterally, that could be considered. Um, and I could ask, uh, I could ask our committee to look at traffic calming measures along Gray Street. Um, I will say that there were, uh, I would say, fewer cars along that stretch of road. There were definitely large gaps for people to cross, mm -hmm. but um, I think a lot of the longer straight uh, streets like Gray Street in Arlington do tend to get people who are maybe going a, a little faster than they, um, sure. than they ideally would be, faster than 25. So we could look at um, additional traffic calming measures Thank you, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Sebi, do you want to add anything to that? I, I, I just want to, I believe Gray Street's got an SSR at 30. Yeah, yeah. it does. I, yeah. I'm pretty sure it does. It, it, oh, it does, so, yeah. Okay. yeah. Even if we make that next on the list. You know, right. Mr. Sorry, did you want to, again, this doesn't require an emotional discussion. I was going to say, it doesn't need a motion. Um, yeah. okay, go ahead. No, I just, I appreciate the work on this. I think, yeah, I spent some time on TAC what seems like many years ago. And I think cross, crosswalks are difficult sometimes because you want to make an area safer, but there's always line of sight. When this inquiry first came to us, 
you know, I'm very familiar with Churchill. I go down that street safely every morning to work. And Churchill is at the crest of a pretty, probably the steepest section of Gray Street coming up. And there's really no way to make any crossing there safe. I would never cross at Churchill um, because the cars are just coming up at such a steep, steep incline, they cannot see you. So, you know, I'm glad to see that that is recognized in this report. And as you say, it's, you can't put a crosswalk in and create a, a false sense of security. And sort of a lesser concern is that the more crosswalks you put, you know, without a crosswalk, you can legally cross the street as long as you find a place that's safe to do so. If you put a crosswalk in somewhere where you know others are going to cross it all sections of the street, you're starting, you're creating illegal crossings on that street. Um, but I think, you know, I, I agree with the recommendation regarding crosswalks in that area. I think this is an area where, you know, people have to be able to do so safely and for us to designate one specific spot within the context of the traffic patterns is difficult. Um, I do support any traffic calming measures with the first step to be to make the the speed limit lower and help make enforcement easier for our police department but i certainly i agree with and anticipated the the results of this this report thank you mr hurt i just have a, a couple of comments and our request was about a crosswalk and and you've articulated the reasons why it'd be difficult to Put a crosswalk. I, w I will say, I cross that street quite often because if you're coming through Monotony Rocks Park, and you want to go to Mass Ave. You either go down to Jason Street. This is one way to do it. It's a connector, and I, I, I cross that rather frequently. And the concern I have there is the cars going westbound on Gray Street because they're coming up the hill, and the only sign there is a speed limit sign as they go up the hill. And that's I think to, to Mr. Helm's point, maybe. It could be a signage issue there because that's the, the to me the biggest fear. You're crossing that street, and the cars come up that street at a pretty good speed. And and I have been in situations where I'm halfway across, and I've got to get, I'm not as fast as I used to be, but I've got to get across because they come up there quickly and they're not expecting to see people because there's no signage. And and so there there would be a challenge with a crosswalk, but I I do think there may be an opportunity for for signage there, and I know further up Gray Street at, at Pine Ridge, you've got a crosswalk right on the crest. Now, you can see it as you're coming up the hill and you're coming down, so it's different than what this situation would be. But I, I think, you know, as opposed to people going eastbound where there's a lot of visibility for people coming from Highland, there isn't as much coming up. And it's, it's I, I consider that a danger, even though it's not many people. Um, it, it is a connector there, so I think Mr. Helmer's suggestion is a good one. It sounds like you're willing to look into that maybe for a signage suggestion, even you know, pedestrians ahead or, or whatever else can be looked at, because if you looked at that and you cross that street, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I've had more than one occasion where you're surprised when the car gets to the top of the hill and you're not across yet, and, and you don't have a lot of time and they don't have a lot of time. So that that remains a concern for me um, and, and it, it's a strange intersection in terms of this curbing there for a sidewalk at Churchill in gray but there's no sidewalk and, and, and you're absolutely right so um, maybe if that could be looked into um, I, it's it, because I, I think there's, there's there's still some questions and I'm sure we'll hear from from people in that neighborhood and, I, and I've witnessed it myself so I don't um, with that I don't think we need a motion no. For that, you've agreed maybe time to take a little bit further review and we can check back in, but um, it's really a different question than what we sent you originally, so I appreciate your willingness to look at that. Um, all right, so any other comments or questions on item 18? All right, on to item 19 uh, is a discussion of Churchill Ave, Endicott Road, and Gloucester Street intersection, which is just down the hill from the intersection that we're talking about now, and I, I, I think you've got some... Um, a study that was done on that as well. Um, yes, yes, thank you. That's also um, just around the corner from this study area. 
And um, yeah, TAC is still developing um, a memo to send to the select board. Um, so requests like this um, are usually considered like a lower priority than something like um, a project like Park Avenue where there has been uh, a pedestrian injury. Um, and our initial assessment was that, you know, this intersection was low risk to vulnerable users like bicyclists and pedestrians. Um, there are very few crashes here. Two of the three were with parked cars and it's not near any schools or playgrounds. Um, so we are, we're looking with DPW to sort of formalize the drawing that was sent by the uh, residents and things like this will probably be in like um, the a list of projects where DPW is aware as funds become available or as work is done in the neighborhood, they'll be accomplished, but they aren't um, high priority for the safety of pedestrians or other vulnerable users. So we, we have a couple intersections like that that we need to sort of formalize and send a memo back to the select board about um, but now that it's summer and it's a little quieter, these are the sorts of projects that sort of pick up again. Great, and thank you for that update. Any questions on, on this item? Okay, thank, thank you for the update on that. That doesn't require any action on our, our part, but we appreciate you uh, updating us and, and providing the information. So, and thank you for your patience, both of you, and Mr. Stubby for, uh, you're at the tail end of the agenda tonight and it was a rather long one. So we appreciate you coming in and joining us. Great. Okay, next we will move on to num item number 20, um, which is a request for a new memorial and, and for, and a, um, I, I think some additional work at an existing memorial uh, for uh, Alan Hovanas. And uh, Mr. Feeney and I have had some discussions about this uh, I don't know if you want to start, Mr. Feeney, and then I'll add on, but we, we had some discussions with Mr. Jones, who was referenced here, and I had talked to Mr. Helmuth uh, about potentially becoming involved in the first request, which is to add on to the existing memorial that's already been approved. But with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to Mr. Feeney, and then uh, I, can, I can elaborate on it as well. Sure, thank you, Mr. Chair. Not too much to add, though I will note Mr. Alan Jones is an attendee of tonight's meeting. I just wanted to point that out. But I had the opportunity to meet with uh, Arlington resident Michael Armanius uh, previously back in the winter to discuss this request and provide some uh, general direction as to how that process uh, may proceed in the future. And I know they formalized, uh, they being the the four representatives of the Armenian Cultural Foundation formalized their request in the form of a letter for the uh, ways they were hoping to memorialize Mr. Havanas. Uh, that correspondence had been sent to the board in early July and I was just hoping the board could consider this evening uh, taking that next step of making a referral to the Public Memorial Committee so that formally that step will have been taken. But of course, that meeting would not uh, take place until uh, you know the appropriate rendering of any sign or plaque and its location had been uh, thought through so that it could be presented for review by the Public Memorials Committee. And similarly, for those who may be charged with reviewing uh, the website uh, content that may be the destination of that QR code to give some time for that to be uh, developed. Great. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Feeney. And I'll just add, I, where we already have an existing memorial, we've already voted that, and, and Mr. Helmuth had expressed interest. Um, we didn't think that that was necessary for a further referral. The Five Blossom Street would be, and we indicated that we would make the referral, but there would not be a meeting until more information came in, and that, that seemed to be agreeable. So. With that, um, if anybody has any motions, questions, comments, Mrs. Mahan. I'd like to move um, the request to the Public Memorial Committee. Great. Second. Okay, second. Any other discussion? Okay, so on a motion 
by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Hurd. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. All right, that concludes item 20. And we are now on to new business. Uh, Ms. Maher, any, oh. Um, Mr. Chair, yep. um, I know you, you. Oh, yeah, you're right. We laid on the table the two appointees yeah, yeah, yeah. to Council on Aging. Do you want to, since they were here, maybe I make a motion and ask our board administrator to contact them if it's successful to let them know that they were approved. We did see that they were here and would certainly appreciate maybe if they want to zoom in at a future meeting to coordinate with the office just so we can um, yeah. speak uh, to so them. Th so thank you for reminding me that. Yeah, and, th and this is one of those exceptions. Sometimes when the individual is in that. here, yeah. we will continue the meeting. They were here, and unfortunately, we didn't get to them in, in, in a timely fashion. So can I appreciate the motion. Yeah, absolutely. Approval of um, Elaine McNulty Knight, and if I can do them both at the same time, since it's the same committee, Council on Aging. Um, Marie Raposa, is that okay? Okay. Okay. Second. okay, so in a motion by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Hurd for approval of the recommendation uh, to the Council on Aging. All in favor say aye. 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 Great. Thank okay. you. And our Sorry. apologies. I, I will attend the Council on Aging meeting in September and <laughs> extend my apologies. Face for, the music. <laughs> I, we had this come up during one of the remote periods and it was a member of Council on Aging. We didn't get to her until 10 o'clock. Oh my God. I said, that's our final oh test for your commitment to the Council. <laughs> that's, that's going too far. Um, <laughs> all right, so with that, we are now on to new business. Uh, Ms. Marr? No new business, thank you. Attorney Cunningham? No new business, Mr. Chair. Mr. Feeney? No new business. Mr. Diggins? No new business. Mrs. Mahan? Uh, Anxiously awaiting with you, my colleagues, and the town manager and town council, the decision on August 31st, and um, as whatever comes out of that, I'll have a conversation with the chair about perhaps a future uh, agenda item. Uh, September 9th, unless there's a time uh, issue, may be a little too um, ambitious, so maybe later on in September or October, but that's it. Great. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Mr. Holmes? Um, no new business except to just to remind the chair that I will be out of town on September 9th. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. I uh, can't say no Mr. new business except. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mr. Hurd? No, I just took a look. What to acknowledge and mention the Arlington Housing Authority and the Arlington Police Department. They put on the National Night Out. Yeah. I was there with Mr. Diggins. We, with many, many, many children that were got to go in the various vehicles and also gave an opportunity for certain interest groups to uh, interact with town residents to is a wild success. They ran out of cotton candy before <gasps> some people could get get theirs. But other than that, it, it was a, a great event and really more community policing by the Arlington Police Department and uh, a great way for the Arlington Housing Authority to reach out to town residents. So great. that's it. Thank you, Mr. Hurd, and, and I have no new business Move to this evening. <laughs> Do we have a second? Second. Hey, a motion to adjourn made by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Diggins. All in favor say aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.